Hello and welcome to another edition of Brungren Radio Virtual Vision. That's a funny looking cruiser mill over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody got a special guest host tonight. The one, the only, Lynn, the veggie girl. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for saving me today. Yeah. Cruiser Mel has been to the optometrist and had her eyes dilated. Oh. And can't see. That's a problem. Yes. Have you ever done that before? Long time ago, yeah. It's awful. Yeah. Absolutely awful. It's been a long time. I'm gonna try make I tried to tell her. You can, they have a machine that does it now. Well, you don't have to do that. But, oh. you know. She never listens to me. You know how it is. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to talk tonight to Mary Lou. She's having a little bit of trouble getting uh, her link working. We're going to get that worked out. Up, oh, And we're going to have Bill Bricker on. We are going to have Veggie Girl. You're going to have me. We're going to talk to you about a lot of stuff. Uh, let's start. Cruise, uh, <laughs> I was about to say Cruise Mouth. Let's start Veggie Girl with the Me We or We Me tour. Uh, it starts the 10th. Of April, I starts think. next month. Can you believe yeah. that? Yeah. All right. So, what are you hearing? You got any scoop? Um, I don't have any scoop actually. I mm -hmm. think they start. No, I think they start rehearsals on the tenth. That's it. And then I'm not sure when they the first show is. It's sometime next month. But they the you can always see the um, matter of fact, it was flashing on here. You can always see the whole schedule on EJ site. Uh, a ton of shows all across the country, going to some places that. Sometimes, you know, he doesn't like Florida. Um, some yeah. places in the South, he's not always going to. Coming to Buffalo, doing the he hasn't been to Buffalo in a long time. So. Is it Buffalo? Yes. What, what's the venue? It's it's the Riviera. It's actually in North Tonawanda, but it's a suburb of Buffalo. So. Yeah. What's the other one he does? The Trough or something like that? He has, I don't even know if the Trough is still there. <laughs> he did shows there though, right? In yeah. Buffalo? Yeah, he, okay. did, he did a few. Very good. Yeah, I start memorizing these venues after a while. Yeah. So Live Nation is doing most of those shows. They've announced some uh, new ones. You can keep adding on, so check the website if you're not sure if he's coming to your town or not. You can get tickets on Ticketmaster typically. The uh, Michael Dorf, who is in charge of the City Winery in New York, announced a new show this week. He's done several with Todd. I'm trying to remember who some of the other um, – tributes were too. One of them I think was Aretha Franklin maybe, but he's done several at the Carnegie Hall where he gets a lot of great artists together and they celebrate somebody's music. So this one's going to be Crosby, Stills, and Nash. That's Perfect that's for all you hippies. Huh? I never would have, I mean, I love Crosby, Stills, and Nash, but I never would have put Todd with that. So that I, I, I won't I, be able to go, but I wish I could. I think it's, I think Dorf just really likes Todd. So he throws oh. him in all. He's been on several of those kind of shows. And, you know, I bet he's, I bet it'll sound great for that show. Yeah, it's, I hope there's recordings because I'd love to hear it. But it's day after Mother's Day, so there's no way. Yeah, that's tough. There'll be a lot of videos. Yeah. But I'll never forget. We were, we tried to do, <laughs> I probably told the story a few times. We tried to do A Watts at Carnegie Hall. Mel and I got on the phone with them. They wanted to have a meeting. And the requirements and the craziness they were telling us, like there was one elevator and you got to move everything upstairs, all this stuff. And it was just like, I don't think Todd would be real happy if we pulled it, if we did that. Hmm. So we vetoed. <clears throat> would have been great, but it's just, uh, it's a lot to do something there. It's a special place. It is a special you. place. I've, I've actually yeah, never so. been. But somebody like Michael Dorf, that's like walking apart, you know. So, and he's done several there before. So, uh, all right, let's talk about Akron. I'm very excited about Akron, Ohio. That's going to be fun. Yes. April 25th, which is a Thursday, will be the parte. And then the 26th will be a Todd concert presented by Live Nation at the same venue where we'll be partying. So, that is the Goodyear Theater, which is where we did the Bowie show a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. It's not the Civic where we did A. Watts and the Beatles show, but it's owned by the same people and, and they I take care of you. And it's a great venue. I What's love that? The Civic. I love the Civic. I did you go to the thing last time? The Bowie thing, yeah. yeah I was there. In, in Akron? Uh huh. I was there. Okay. I mean, you know, my memory's not all that good. 
<laughs> However, the that was a great venue. I like the Goodyear Theater. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's, it's a good fit for this one. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> we have a lot to talk about on that, and hopefully we'll get Mary Lou in here in a little while. Let me check just to see if she's emailing me here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> she's down. She says she's trying to download Chrome, even though she already has it. Chrome. Okay. I'm gonna keep keep talking to her. We'll figure out something. All right. So we are gonna live stream this now. What did that happen? My um, live stream I did one time from Cincinnati. I think somewhere I just stuck an iPad up there and filmed from a distance. This is not that. We are doing. A multi camera. If you ever seen any of the work from Midland, uh, they did the, the NAS show for us. If it's on our YouTube channel, they did uh, Secret Society in Columbus. You know the the ones where you see the drummer up close and all that multi camera, where roving camera stuff. That is a uh, that's how we're going to do this at the Goodyear Theater, which is a, a beautiful place and a big theater. So what's nice about that is Maurice will fit perfectly on that stage, and. If you watch this live stream, you're going to get to see all the entertainment. Uh, we may even do some, you know, interviewing, talking to people and stuff like that for fun. But you're going to get to see Maurice and you're going to get to see a lot of other stuff on the stage that we'll talk to Bill about in a little while. But um, I don't want to give it all away, so I'm not going to get too far. Let me think about what else I wanted to tell you. So anyway, we got the live stream and it will be Chasm. will be performing some solo shows. He's also told me that He's working on something special. I did not inquire any further. I'll just take his word for it. We have all of Todd's band will be around. I don't know if they're all going to play or not. I know Bruce McDaniel definitely will. Uh, Prairie will be there. Bobby. Gil will be there. Bobby Strickland will be there. Bobby will so you'll get to see them mingling. You might get to see them perform with our bands. We have Throw Money as well. Uh, Lynn Sprague's heading that up. And if you've seen them lately, they're really good. Two really good bands doing Todd music, Utopia music, celebrating uh, the 50th anniversary of Todd Runger's Utopia. And Mary Lou is going to be there. Mary Lou will be performing as well. And I'm hoping she can tell us about it here in a little while. But she's got to figure out how to get onto this little channel. So really want to talk to her. Yeah. Now. Some of y'all were involved in 2018. We did Maurice. We refurbished. Poor old Maurice was sitting around in a. He was outside. That's not. That was not the place for Maurice. He was inside in a big storage thing. The feet are outside, but not big Maurice. Oh, the feet were outside. Okay. Yeah. So he, Chris has a good space for it, but you know it was worn down. So we raised money several years ago and had him refurbish it and then brought it to. Cleveland. And he also took it to, I believe it was New Jersey, New York, somewhere where they did the interviews for that tour, the last uh, Utopia tour where Gil and them were in. That was a few years ago. That's cool. I didn't and know that. yeah, they're in the background uh, of that. And it was a lot of fun. People got pictures. It was just neat to see it. That's a really important part of Utopia history, as you know. So we just got a wild idea. Let's do it again. Let's, you know, why refurbish it for one party, right? He was my roommate for a while. I was about to say, tell me some stories about the old days with Maurice. God, so long ago. <laughs> um, well, Chris Anderson wanted to get rid of it. He um, he wanted the all that space for something. I'm not sure what. So <laughs> I was living in an old church with this guy and. We had the space, so he brought it up, and I took a whole, you know, tractor trailer, and yeah. they set the whole thing up, pyramid and everything. And uh, my my biggest regret is not taking the set list that was taped to the back of Maurice. Ooh. Oh. Now, how did do you have the keys? How did you get a hold of the keys? I, well, when I broke up with the guy, I took the keys and I took the chest too. I was like, how is the fan? So I'm like, I'm taking this. I'm glad I did because it's safe, you know? I got to remember they to bring my keys with me to Akron. They weren't his property. What was that? They weren't his property. They were your property. Well, they are now, they are now you know, I've had them for since 1985. 
Okay, so, so tell me as a too young to see the raw tour person. Yes, what were the keys about? They were the, you know, the sing ring, the sing ring song. The first, all the four keys, you know, the four keys, the earth, wind, fire, and water. Okay. And so the, what did they do with the keys on the, during the tour, the, I, the I, show? I asked Todd that a long time ago. And he said, because one was broken, I asked him what happened. And he said, they got tossed around a lot. So they just, <laughs> they just threw them to each other. <laughs> So, so during the concert, all they did was throw them to each other? I mean, it wasn't like a, was there. I bet that you was Bricker's there. got a story for us. We'll have to ask him. He'll know the deal. He saw it. Mary, now, do you Mary remember Bill? Bill was telling me this thing about a five-by-five five TV that started the show or something. Do you remember this? And they showed these corny videos. Mm -mm. No? No, in, in 1977? Yeah. No, oh, no, I didn't know that. Wasn't Did it you go? What are you doing? Didn't they do Oops and Raw? Was it the what same? were you doing back in those days? I was 12. <laughs> what were you, oh, you weren't partaking yet? Okay. No. But, but Oops and Raw. Oh, you saw it when you were 12? In 1977, I was 12. Yeah. Wow. Now, how did you get to go to that show? Your dad took you? I Mom didn't go. You? Oh, you never saw it? Mm -mm. I'm sitting here asking you questions like you were there. No wonder you mm -hmm. didn't know. Okay. Well, I'll save those for Bricker. Yeah. You just ended up, so you didn't go see Rob, but you ended up with Maurice and the Keys. That's pretty cool. And the pyramid, the whole thing. The okay. Whole thing. Where was this stored? In a church? Yep. It was an old abandoned church. We were living in the basement. And um, yeah. it was a huge church with like 19 foot ceilings and it was tall enough to raise the pyramid up. Did anybody ever come visit it? Nope. Hmm. Oh, Chip. Or Charles Stagnita, Chip, we call him Chip. He came. Oh, yeah. And uh, play on, brother, play on. Yeah. That, him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that, what well, was before, you know, we put an ad in the in the Utopia Times, but nobody came. So, different world uh, now. You tried, sure. to, hmm? you tried to have people come look at it. What was that? You tried to have people come look yeah, at it. You put it in the Times. Time saying we had the raw set and come see it, and not wow. one phone call. Okay, did you climb the pyramid? I tried. And <laughs> it wobbles. Yeah. So I was I was using my hands and I got up about halfway and said uh, no. <laughs> so Todd was able to play a lead and climb that thing. I'll never. I don't. I tried to climb it too when it was at, um, you know, in Delaware. Daniel, Daniel Harper, I, Daniel Harper. Harper there's Harper. no way, yeah, Dan Harper. There's no way I was going to go up to that top of that thing. I can't imagine doing it. And Todd did it later over there. He didn't but go all the way up he, either, though. He did all four. Yeah, he did it with you know, yeah. like holding on and everything. It wasn't like the old days. That that must have been something. But yeah, it it, it shakes a little bit. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right. So. Yep. I was just going to say, so the stage, we had everything. We even had the stage, which was painted gold. And there were holes mm -hmm. in four corners of the stage that the poles of the pyramid would go through. Mm -hmm. But our ceiling wasn't high enough to raise the pyramid high enough to get the poles through the hole. Mm -hmm. So they were actually outside the stage. And they were, they were held together with oh, yeah. chains going underneath the stage. So it wasn't <laughs> as stable as it was for Todd. I will say that. Yeah. Okay. So we're celebrating all of Utopia. How many times do you think you've seen Utopia in concert? Um, I, I started at POV. I started very late, so I saw five POVs. That's with the with the two with the tubes, and okay. then I saw, you know, a couple times when, in twenty eighteen, two two shows of that. I think so. That's okay. it. I've seen Todd more more than I can count, but Utopia I've only seen. Oh yeah. Oh, and then well. With the Moogie Utopia, I saw yeah, the Highline Ballroom. I mean, yeah, yeah. what a unbelievable experience that nobody ever thought they would see to see that version. Plus, you know, they brought in others, but uh, two special nights in New York. That for first sure. show at Highline was, it's got to be one of the best nights of my life <laughs> for a Todd band. Absolutely. Really something else. Mm -hmm. um, and then to see 
Todd back with Willie. Nobody thought that was going to happen. I mean, it always was some kind of surprise. Uh, I don't think he'll ever get on stage with BB, but everybody else he's kind of reunited with. <laughs> was he ever on stage with BB? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm to throw her out there. That's one he's not going to ever, you know, probably yeah. be seen with again. He's, he's, anyway. He's, he, for, he forgives a lot in his old age, but some, he's got to draw the line That's, somewhere. Yeah, that wasn't – the book tells you a lot about that. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So we're streamlining this show, this concert. You're going to get to see Secret Society, the new version. They've got Daniel's back, and Fernando's moved to base. So yeah, you're going yeah. to see that. They're going to – they got a great set list coming. You get to see Throw Money with all these special guests. So like we did during COVID – times it we don't want to set up a ticket and all that's just free just watch it if you want however if you'd like to donate to help out with the streaming and everything all this stuff costs money uh most of the money will go to forge my race is what we've told everybody it's not not something for us it's we're trying to pay for that it's very expensive to move that big thing all the way over from new york and set it up and all that. there's just a ton that goes into this it'll be worth it so if you want to pitch in, that's great. We're going to talk more about that too with Bill and some things he's got um, to offer if people want to do that too. So that'll be fun in a little while. It's really, it's more about the stream and you're going to be, you're going to see that it'll be worth it. Whatever you pitch in or if you watch it for free, even though it's not tied, there's going to be a ton to watch. It's going to be well done uh, with a lot of cameras. And that's, that's, who's doing it? That's really cool. There's going to be a lot of cameras. It's uh, Chris Williams, like uh, Corky's brother, that's done a lot for us. Oh, okay, uh -huh. awesome. Yeah, he's he's real good. Matter of fact, he bought a new camera just for this. But I really want Mary Lou to get on here to tell her story because yeah, I think no. once everybody hears that, nobody's going to yeah. miss this thing. So, um, I'm going to see what I can do. I'm gonna. She's still talking to me. Let's see. All right. I'm going to have to deal with her for a little while because I'm going to get her on this show. She's just having a little trouble. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I sent a bad link or something. So I'm going to bring Bill in. I'm going to let him update you on what you didn't know about the raw questions that I ask. Yeah. Well, and then I'll be back, hopefully, with Mary Lou here in a minute. Okay. All right. Peace out. Howdy. I'll be back. What's going on, hey, man? Bitch. How are you? Yeah, how are you doing? I am loving um, the R word, retirement. Oh, I, uh, you suck. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll take it. I will take Good it. For you. No, I'm everything jealous. I've always heard about how you get you get more busy retired. Totally, totally true. It's only been two weeks. I'm in my third week, and I can barely keep up with how much stuff is going on. Um, not the least of which, I've had a relationship with an oldies radio station here in Charlottesville. I don't know, maybe five years. And I sent him a note. I said, hey, you know, I thought I was going to be retiring in July, but it's now. And they said, well, come on by. And I went in and almost before I sat down, they said, we have an immediate need. Seven to nine weeknights. Awesome. Basically play anything out of your out of your catalog that you want. Wow, that's fantastic. It's so fun. What's it the radio so station? Fun. I should probably stream it's, it. Um, it's 979-WREN. They have an app, 979-WREN, seven to nine weekdays. So um, I'm trying really hard not to just play Todd Rundgren 24-7. <laughs> I don't want to get too bad of a reputation. Yeah, yeah. But there's so much there. You know, there's so much in his catalog. You take his work, Utopia, Naz, then you all add the productions. All the productions, yeah. You, I, there's interest there, whether people know it or not. Right. So I'm trying yeah. to be balanced. I'm not succeeding too well. He pretty much gets into every set list one way or another. That's and, and it's okay. They don't have, they only have about seven Todd songs in their catalog. But there's 10,000 songs they're licensed to play. So that's what I do. So I'm romping through the 60s and 70s and early 80s and... And it's great. And it's great timing, too, because um, you guys were talking about Ra. That was my second Todd show. Okay, and so what were they doing with the keys? I don't really remember the keys that well, but if you remember the song Sing Ring, yeah. they each have to find a key. Right, I, yeah. You know, I just Willie's Water and Kaz's yeah. Wind and we Roger's Fire and Todd's we Earth. And in, had, uh, we performed it in Hawaii in, in June. Wow. Yeah, we. I was part so, of the choir. It was really amazing. 
the band, you know, the band. So they have to get the keys and they go over to the chest and they open the chest and then there's the the glass guitar, which in those days was actually made of dry ice. And he flings the, you know, and there I've heard stories about roadies having to figure out how to make sure the guitar was ready. Dry ice had to be, you know, created in every city. And and what's wild about that time is it took them 18 months to build it all, to design it, to uh write the music to figure out the stage show, get it all put together, all the lights, all the fog, all the lasers, the laser beam came out of the center of the, you know, the head of the Sphinx and, and get all that orchestrated. And the album, they were already on tour with it when the album came out in uh, 77. I saw it on, on March 25th, 77, but it, then it was over, you know, and that's where, and Oops, Wrong Planet came out in the fall of that year. They had two albums released that year. Yeah. And what was wrong planet was about, well, what does that mean? It's like they spent all this time, they spent all this money, they tried to get it going. And when I saw them, I saw them at the Fox in Atlanta, which that was a trip in itself, you know, just to be in the Fox where they had recorded um Utopia theme. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um it it was half to three quarters full. It wasn't it wasn't sold out. And um so so much so much energy and the beginning of the show i don't know how big the screen was it was big enough that you could see it from all over around the theater but it basically was like a projector screen and i i don't can't i must have been back projected at some point and they had these cheesy videos roger did pipeline it was a video of pipeline with it looked like him on a green screen background pretending to surf in a pipe uh pipeline song there was a song called Love Reunion by Chasm, where it said in the credits, written by him, produced by him, all the instruments by him, Love Reunion. And there was a crazy video where, you know, when you do this thing where you turn the camera upside down and mask your nose and then your, you paint eyes on your yeah, chin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, that kind of they did yeah. that. Uh, everybody in the band is in that way doing some kind of crazy song, and this all plays. And there's this part where, and actually, I saw it. It's somewhere on YouTube. There's this video exists of what they played. Well, didn't they? Didn't they do that for the Feed Don't Family Now video or something with the face? Yes, yeah. yes. They use the same. They seem use the same trick for that. And uh, so this thing plays. And then the the screen goes down, you know, just goes down automatically as the fog comes up and the lights come up and it's, you know, communion with the sun. So it was wow. It was quite the spectacle. And uh, so that was my second Todd show. The first one was um, 50 years ago this October, October 16th, 1974. I was 16. How do you remember the date? I I study this stuff. It's <laughs> I remember the year, but I, and maybe the month. No, I have the I have the I have the ticket, but also that one was like that's like my initiation. I had known about Hello, it's me, and I saw the light, and then I learned through a friend that he produced Day After Day by Badfinger, and he produced American Band by Grand Funk, mm -hmm. and I had a friend, most importantly, play me little clips out of. Uh, a Wizard of True Star. And I heard, I remember remembering standing in his basement, I'm hearing just one victory. And it just like, it just, all that stuff was going on. I was so interested. And then we went to this, this show and it, you know, it, the show didn't change my life. Me going to the show and then getting that focus and paying attention and working on myself that's what's changed my life but it's really it's really a quite a dance between you know i keep forgetting it's not todd todd knows it's not todd it's the music it's the it's what you bring to it what's you what value you have to it and how you incorporate that in your life right. that's that's the magic of it he, he didn't invent he utopia he didn't invent ra he didn't invent karma or enlightenment or love or any of it he sings about it in a way that just gets in your brain and just like so I um I've got to 
talk about that. I have to celebrate that. And I was in the process of setting that up and getting that going. Um, but I did, I did 50 years of something, anything two, three years ago, and it about killed me. I uh, did get my, finally got my full page in Rolling Stone. Thanks to everybody who's helped <laughs> help that happen. Um, but then in 2022, so I did the Rolling Stone thing. I did my whole auction thing. I did, I was working on stuff for the Bowie show. I had all the cutouts that I did. Um, you know, I came back from, from that weekend with COVID because I just stretched myself so thin. I'm trying not to, trying to pace myself a little better. But then when this thing came up where he's going to do the raw show, Maurice is coming out. It's like, oh, that's just absolutely perfect. I don't know what else I might do to celebrate 50 years of Todd's Utopia. But this is this is part one of I hope more. But we'll, we'll see. It all depends on how much people give and how much they want it to happen, because this is a fan driven machine. One hundred percent. And that's what makes everything that Rundgren Radio does is because there are enough people that care about it enough to make it happen. And sometimes you think we're going to do all this for 150 people. I mean, one night and it's like, yeah, yeah, we're going <laughs> well, to do helps. that. Huh? The live streaming helps. You know, be yeah. A bigger audience. I, I mean, I honestly, I want people to kick themselves if they didn't go to this. <laughs> I just, um, and maybe I'm overblowing it in my mind, but um, I have my commitment to this. Doug is Doug's Doug's deal is bringing in um, the money for Maurice, and I'm working on everything else. There's the base of the Sphinx. There's the feet. There's the pyramid itself, and um, yeah. So, uh, and I've got all my parts collected. I've got to assemble them and practice putting it together. It's like a big tinker toy, you know, shows over. Huh? Build, shows over. You've already built all the beans, man. <laughs> Veggie girl's too good an interviewer. She got cut. Uh, to the yeah, oh, she didn't, she just let, let me gab. So. <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, we got Mary Lou. In for Hi, Mary Lou. Yay. Look how good she looks. Look at that hair. Great. Wow. What's your secret? Hi, guys. Getting younger and younger. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> you look amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I guess, yeah, Todd liked the white hair. He said it was perfect rock and roll hairdo. I love <laughs> I love the cut. It looks great. Is it white? Yeah, it is. Pretty. I, I, that is my natural color. <laughs> and it's so yeah. weird. People come up to me in the grocery store and go, beautiful hair. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. It just grew that way. <laughs> <laughs> you pay a lot of money for that. I know. They do. Like, yeah, yep. what? A... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, right. anyway, that's me. You got me. You go. Yay. <laughs> All right. We we pulled it off. We're very excited. Oh, so, God. Mary you don't know. I've been, I, oh, my God. It's almost nine o'clock. I've been on this for an hour trying to oh, figure geez. this out. I'm so technically challenged. I'm but sorry. It's okay. We're so terrible to you. It's all right. But, you know, I'm here. You're getting there. We'll be doing it again. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna drag me and kicking and screaming. Yeah. That's, right. Okay. That's right. So what's been uh, happening anyway. with you lately? What's been going on? How was Todd Stock? Well, I was at Todd Stock, yeah. Yeah, how was uh, it? Todd flew me there. Yeah, nice. Uh, which was very sweet of him. Uh, mm -hmm. but I was still kind of in a daze at that point. I think I kind of sat with the Rundgren family most of the time at the picnic table. But it was it was nice because it took me out of my environment. Although I I'm not changing anything. I'm in the house by myself, surrounded by all of Jesse's books and <laughs> CDs and albums and oh my God. And we've moved uh, the musical instruments, amps and pedals to a storage unit that George Cowan's in charge of. Nice. And eventually I'll be posting some stuff about that. But right now it's still a, a work in progress. Yeah. Um, that's, that's heavy stuff. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. And, you know, 
the house is, you know, it was chock full. <laughs> I never realized. I knew we ran out of space a while ago. And uh, the fall before he got the first fatal disease, he mm. finally said to me, okay, build me a studio. Because I've been bugging him for years. Please, please. I just want to build you a separate building like Todd had mm -hmm. so that you'll have your own studio and then you can move a lot of his stuff into your studio. What a great idea. <laughs> and he kept putting it off and putting it off. And he finally said, yes, build me a studio. And then we got the bad news mm. and about the cancer and, and then um, too much chemo took him out. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. But it was just, I, it's what God's will. You know? mm. And he was very peaceful. He was extremely peaceful and funny right up until the day he died. As he always was. Absolutely. <laughs> so how many times did you, uh, all that gear, I guess, what would you stub your toes and stuff walking around? Just <laughs> no, no, now? he was, he had, he was very, he had a way of storing things that you hardly mm -hmm. noticed, you know, like he was very okay. visual and, mm -hmm. Some of the things, you know, were in closets. He had a whole a room in the house here that was chock full, you know, and mm -hmm. George went through everything and and uh, moved it, the things that we wanted to put into the storage facility. And some people, you know, I've sold a few of the guitars and and uh, family and friends, you know, people that mm -hmm. wanted to buy things, um, but there's still lots. <laughs> so, <laughs> but George is now, going, he's in charge of it all. That's yeah. just, he had a ring. He knows what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Does he live over that way? Yes, he does. Yeah. Okay, he lives in Kingston, New York, which is not very far okay. from Woodstock. Yeah. 16 yeah. miles or so, right? I've known him forever. I mean, I met George when I went to work for Todd. And he was working at Bearsville Studios then and became okay. we became fast friends. I've been friends with him and Jill, his wife. And and he was a good pal to Jesse. And Jesse asked him to do all this stuff because mm -hmm. he knew I'd be overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't yeah. got a clue. Yeah, that's <laughs> good to have helpers. Yeah, yeah. good okay. friends. Yeah. So what about uh, now? I love that area where y'all live. Oh, it's and so I, peaceful. I know. Yeah, but I haven't seen it since the, the person bought, the lady bought the Bearsville and all that. And I know the restaurants were changing and all this. Oh, How did she, that all take out for you? Oh, my God. She invested millions. I'm literally millions and millions mm -hmm. of dollars. She renovated every building. I mean, it's just unbelievable what she did with it. Is the little, little Bear Cafe still there? No, she... <laughs> She she did a few things I thought were like, hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. um, when the place got into disrepair, there was a, an owner that really wasn't keeping it, you know, in shape. Mm -hmm. And so when she bought it, uh, the Bear Cafe was already gone. Mm -hmm. And she put a Mexican restaurant in there. <laughs> and then... <Is> <laughs> I don't, I don't eat there. I can't eat spicy food. So whatever. Uh, but, um, she turned what was the little bear into the bear cafe, hmm. but that's kind of tiny. You know, it's diff It's all different. The best, I think the biggest and best project she did was the theater itself mm -hmm. because she went in there and put a new sound system in. She, she actually put chandeliers in the ceiling. And I thought, well, that's a little over the top. Yeah. But I, I'm kind of used to it now. Yeah. And, the Phantom and, of the Opera is here. <laughs> and, and really nice, uh, you know, all new seats and air conditioning. She used all Mitsubishi heat pumps in every building. They're mm. all air conditioned. Wow. She created a massive parking lot which oh. probably Albert's rolling over and it's great <laughs> because it's all paved with lights wow. and everything. No more and gravel. And a lot of trees to That's do good. that. Yeah. yeah. So Fraser um, was involved in that sound system. You talked to him. He, much? Worked, you see him? he worked there for a while for her, Yeah. but he's yeah. not, you know, he's not working there now. I mean, she mm. kind of, she's not doing a lot of music. I think that the place is going to go and uh, have some changes Mm -hmm. because uh, 
I think there's somebody interested in managing the theater for her. And oh. she really needs that help, right? She kind of runs it like an event center, mm. you know, for various events. It's a music and, place. And yeah, but you know, it's small. The capacity yeah. 400. Um, around 425. Mm -hmm. But the shows that she books, they get packed. And then I think there's mm -hmm. even more people, but it gets really crowded fast. Mm -hmm. So it's kind yeah. of too small for big acts and too uh, mm -hmm. big for small acts. <laughs> there, there was talk of, um, and I think it started with Grossman, of putting a hotel over there. Oh, he wanted to. He had one designed, a beautiful plan. Town wouldn't mm -hmm. let him. Oh. <laughs> now is she trying to do that or no? Um, not at this point, but she she purchased uh in town there was, was a big uh that's kind of sounds funny, a funeral parlor, but it had a big Victorian house in the front and then mm -hmm. a funeral parlor and several outbuildings, and she owns all that now. Okay. And she all right, bought I got used yeah, she also bought what used to be the Cafe Espresso where we all played with our bands in the day. Hot Espresso. All right, but, so. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no. Um, you I, before we get into this party thing, uh, Todd is going to be in Florida, Clearwater, places like that. Are you going to go see your daughter and see these shows? I will see. The, I don't know if I'll go to Florida. Um, I've been down there a couple of times already. I went in December for her birthday and then I oh. went down, spent another week with her last month uh, because I will see Todd when he plays up here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know he's playing at the Capitol Theater and his friend Franklin wants me to go to that show. Mm -hmm. And then the next day he's playing in Rhode Island and my little sister lives in Rhode Island. Ooh, so nice. we always go together to see him. And I'll be in Akron and I'll see him in Akron. So I don't know about <laughs> Florida. I yeah. actually I don't do real well in Florida. My yeah. daughter's not happy because I won't move there. But I'm very heat sensitive. Mm. And it's just not a place that I couldn't live there for one mm. thing. I just I couldn't. But <laughs> uh I like going down to visit her, but it's I don't know. I'll probably stick to more like the, you know, Akron, New York. Cold places. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Colder. <in North>. Colder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to snow tonight. And it's the first. Oh, yeah? No so fair. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to, you know, come in like a lion and go out like a lamb. And now it's bitter cold tonight. and The wind's picking up and uh, yeah, we, can go with, we can go with 17. Now it's snowing. Yeah, we're, uh, my daffodils are coming up, and I might. I I, don't know, I was thinking maybe I should cover them tonight, but yeah, it's the weather's nuts. <laughs> it's, it was seventy degrees a week ago. Exactly, my lilac trees. The the leaves are starting to come out, and now it's and, cold and, and where are you? What Rochester? Where? Rochester. Ah, okay. New York. And you're going to see the eclipse. I am. I'm in the path of totality. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. are. You're in a good spot. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's a great song name, "The Path of Totality." <laughs> good band name. <laughs> good so, band Mary Lou, Bill, Bill's on here. I uh, he's see doing that. A project to celebrate, can you believe this? Listen to to, to this. Fifty years since so my first show in October. Fifty years of Todd Runner's Utopia. Can you believe that? Time flies, doesn't it? Wow. 50 years. Well, I worked for Todd for 40. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I lived to tell the tale. Yeah. <laughs> Kudos yeah, to you. I was, Go on. I was yeah. pretty wrecked when, you know, when Jesse passed and just in terms of, you know, ex total exhaustion. And neither one of us ever got COVID, but I got it the, the two days after he died. Oh. I think my immune system was right. just like, pfft, no immune system <laughs> left, yeah. you know. So but, what was your first, what was your first tour? Cause Utopia broke up in uh, 85. I went to work for Todd Rundgren in January of 1980. A friend said to me, I was, I, I was, I had a band and I was singing in the bars, you know, but my daughter was approaching junior high and needed, I needed to earn more money. So I was looking <laughs> for a job. 
and uh, I ran into a gal that said this a rock star who I did not know. I didn't know who he was. Uh, was opening a music video facility, and I have a degree in art and a degree in music. I used to teach art, and so I just thought, oh, good, you know, nice combo, that visual and audio. So I just knocked on the door. And <laughs> you're in Bearsville had... already? I mean, that's where you're from? Or how, how did you get no, I Well, I was living in Phoenicia, a little town with my daughter. I, we had been living in Chicago. I went through a divorce and then eventually left uh, Evanston, Illinois to come back. My parents sold our house on Long Island and moved up here year mm. round. And I mm. just thought mm. it would be better for her to have grandparents and cousins and aunts and uncles, you know. And that, and my mother kept saying, oh, my goodness, dear, they have music in Woodstock, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you should come back home. Aww. So I did. That's and awesome. then, uh, yeah, and Bob Lampell answered the door. They hadn't opened up yet, but I was given the task of arranging the opening night party. I didn't know what brie cheese was, but I got everything Todd wanted. And... We just went from there. It was like, okay, you know, whatever he needed me to do, I did. And eventually, uh, Roger Powell came to me and said, Todd wants you to be tour manager. And I went, okay, I'm the tour manager now. I was like more like assistant production manager, you know, working on sets and all kinds of things like that and uh, painting stuff you know, scraping the green, the blue screen, the green screen, you know, we built this huge big green screen in there. Um, it was, it was fun. It was a yeah, lot so of fun. You're there, you're there for all the Utopia video, doing yeah. the cars, <laughs> the um, planets video and all that. I, I'm curious though, uh, what your interaction with Albert Grossman, not too many people. <laughs> I mean, I found, I've tried to find information on this guy and it's, very difficult. He's got a footnote here, footnote there. So where, where did you meet Albert and how did that go? Oh, Albert was always around. He built the building for Todd. You know, that was, that was, uh, Todd used his money from Meatloaf to buy all the equipment. Mm -hmm. And so that was an understanding, but he, but Albert was charging him rent. <laughs> Albert was, <fun. laughs> you, know, you know, he wore these Indian shirts and he would like, twiddle his thumbs and talk to you and go, well, I don't know, you know, <laughs> but he was very private and his wife mm -hmm. was working on a book about him and a couple of my friends that I worked for her at one point. Uh, Allie, right? After Albert died. I managed Bearsel Studios for her while, till she got an, I was interim studio manager because she knew I wasn't going to stay there forever. But it was a time when things shifted. We'll put it at that. We'll just leave it at that. And um, she said, oh, I hear you're home. And it was just like perfect timing because I could help her, you know, after Albert died. And I don't know what led me to that. But, um, yeah, because then she wanted to write a book about him. And it's mm -hmm. not finished, but she passed away before she finished the book. Mm -hmm. But I have friends, I have two friends that are close with, were close with Sally and they're trying to finish the book. Cause there's oh, not much good. about Albert, even though he was like, he was the Baron of Woodstock and he managed so many famous people, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah, Jack I mean, Joan Baez and the yeah. band and- Bob, um, Dylan. Bob Dylan, I mean, you name Peter it. Paul and Mary. <laughs> Peter, Paul and Mary, yes. Yeah, he managed Peter, Paul and Mary. <laughs> So, I mean, it's quite a legacy and it should be written about some, I hope they do get the book finished. They were doing, she was doing interviews with people about him, you know, and putting, compiling all these interviews together. So, but anyway, that's, that's probably coming down the line. Back to Todd Runner. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, let, let, let's, yeah. um, yeah, let's. I don't know how much you want to tell. Maybe the whole thing. I'd love to hear it again. I, I no, I'll uh, uh, just go on. I turned into Chatty Cafe now that I'm home. No, no, we, no, no, you're good. We love you. No, yeah. it, but I, I want to hear about your. Um, I'm trying to see how to segue this thing. Your, your. If you want to tell us your song choice, 
And you can say what it is. You don't have to. But how you oh, came about oh, the yeah, decision I, for Akron? It's not. You're going to say it's a great story. Well, when you asked if I would do a song, and then I talked to James, and I was trying to think. Uh, I mean, a lot of people know that I'm really spiritual, I guess we'll say it that way. Okay. Um, yeah, my angels and everything. Uh, so, and Jesse was too. So, uh, and, and so is Todd, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I first met him, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know who he was, but I went up to his house for some reason I had to bring something up there and I saw that he had a I had a collection of metaphysical books he had a way bigger collection oh, yeah. and I thought okay I can work for this guy yeah. <laughs> I can do that and um there was a night I think that's what I was telling James about uh I had to deliver a, a FedEx to him you know, and I was in the evening, I went up there with the FedEx and he said, would you like to hear what I'm recording? You know, of course, you know, of course I would love to, you know, I, I figured it out pretty quickly that he was some kind of genius. And so I sat down and he played me, he was working on the healing album, which is one of my all time favorites. Um, and it just blew me away. I mean, it was so deep and so moving. And so when I was asked, what song do you want to do? Of course, I was naming songs like Love is the Answer, you know, like any kind of positive message that I can put out into the world <laughs> to encourage <laughs> people. It's a little dicey out there these days. So um, then James, I, what, I, I named three songs and, and the last one was Compassion. And he said, well, they, he had sung that with the band before, and that would be easy for them because it's a little, the song sounds real simple, but it's a little tricky. And so we decided I would sing Compassion. Oh. Nice. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly very rock and rolly, but it's the message Maybe. that I want to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it's that. Timely. Yeah. I, timely. Yeah, so that's how that came about. And I was telling him the story about why that album is – you know, that was the first time I got the honor of just sitting in his studio and listening to what he was creating. And it kind of blew my mind because I don't really sight read music well, even though I've sung classical music. I, you know, I just memorize it by ear. But my husband, Jesse, could, he was amazing. He could hear any note, name it, and write it out. He mm -hmm. was completely musically literate. But Todd isn't. So it was a fascinating collaboration, the two of them. And Jesse was the only person I know that could say to Todd, you're playing it wrong. And <laughs> Todd would say, show me how to play it. Wow. Because he wow. knew that Jesse, he, he was one with that instrument. I mean, mm -hmm. and music itself. You know, he transcribed whole albums. He did Jeff Beck's album. He did many albums where he transcribed by listening when he was living here in Woodstock in this little room because he loved the quiet and he didn't play music loud, but he could hear every part. And then he would write it out on this huge, these big music sheets, manuscript paper, but every vocal, every drum beat, every, inst every note. It was astonishing to watch it. Yeah, he was he was helpful with us during the orchestra shows. We were doing new things. He would check them and change the key and all. He knew what he knew everything what to do to fix what we yeah. didn't do a good job of with this guy we hired. But um, so let me let me just make sure I want to back right. up for a second. On this story. Back to you, okay. So now I'm going to sing compassion. Okay, I got it. But in my understanding, it. you so you were you go up there, and Todd says, "Do you want to hear some of this that I'm working? Would you on? like to this hear what, what I, album was out? Yeah." That so you got to do compassion before he put it on healing. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I, I, the, the, he played several more than one song. I just sat there like mesmerized. Wow. Yeah. Um, I don't think the album wasn't finished. He was working on it. Yeah, so cool. And yeah, yeah, yeah cappella was cool too. You know, oh, yeah. but that's a whole. So you were in the choir. You were in the choir for that one. The eleven member. Oh, I, yeah, I sang with. Yeah, I. But he said, 
because by then, you know, I was, you know, tour managing production, you know, just doing everything. And he's, I, and I, and I sang with um, a cappella group that toured when I was studying art in Buffalo. So yeah. I said, you know, I used to sing and you know, shyly, <laughs> I'd like to <laughs> sing this with you. And he said, okay, we'll give you a try. You know? mm-hmm. And then I became a member of the 11 voice. It was a 10 voice orchestra. Then I became, it became 11 voices. because mm-hmm. of me. Nice. And uh, he said, but you still have to tour manage. Right. Oh, okay. okay. I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> what a tour. Anyway, so. Yeah. I don't know. I just, um, he saw something in me that he knew that I was smart. I could, you know, I could handle a lot, but, but I, you know, I think some people might've thought I was kind of aloof or something because i am very, I know how to focus and concentrate and, and it wasn't always easy because I couldn't socialize a whole lot on the road, you know, I had a lot of work to do, all the accounting and everything. But I loved it. I had a great life. And I met Jesse. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> win, win. A lot of wins in that story. A lot. And and Todd, I mean, uh, it's just sometimes I think, wow, did that really happen? You know, just touring with him all over the world, singing with him, just being in, you know, the person that he turned to to make things go smoothly. <laughs> I had a few clunker times. Now. Nothing's perfect, but it was a gift. It really was. It yeah, was absolutely. just amazing. So I thought, you know, I'm not going to go, you know, stand on the stage with those guys and do some rock song. I'll just have to stick true to myself. And so I picked Compassion. We love it. Mary Lou, you haven't, I don't think, I don't know that I've ever seen you do a lead for a song. You've done shows. You've been with us and done background for some of these. Yeah. Bands, but never up front center doing a song. This is going to be fantastic. Well, years ago in the seventies, well, I did, I started out in Chicago doing rock operas. Hmm. When I was studying music, there was a, a theater called the center for new music and headed by, um, it's actually a trombone player, William Russo, who's a jazz trombone player, but he wrote these rock operas. And I would I was the lead singer. I, I played Joan of Arc. That was that fit right in. <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll do Joan of Arc. Why not? Except my mother cried when we brought the, we brought the show to Philadelphia to I can't remember the name. I think it was some really important music school. And we played, we did the Joan of Arc rock opera. I mean, I'm talking a rock band and chorus and, you know, whole costumes and the whole thing. And um, when I got burned at the stake, mom was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a multimedia, you know, with video and gels and God, it was the seventies, you know? <laughs> so that's how I started after I left teaching I got divorced and then I wanted to study music and and just uh, started doing those rock operas. And then I moved out here and I had a band, Mary Lou Arnold and the Brick Oven Band. That was from Brick Oven Bread, which was kind Pizza. of silly. The yeah. bass player named it that. Then it was just the Mary Lou Arnold Band. And I did a lot of Linda Ronstadt covers. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. So what was your... What was your deal? I don't think you were in it, but I think you managed some type of uh, ABBA band. Oh, yeah. I, I went in between Todd tours when the work slowed down or there wasn't any work. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, got to make some money now. Um, Toby Ludwig, who's the head of and owner of 21st Century Artists, mm-hmm. manages Christopher Cross. Todd has done shows from all those the Beatles shows. Mm. That's Toby Ludwig, 21st Century Artists. And I don't remember what Todd was doing, but there was a lull. You know, it would be like you work, 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 and then no tour, and then work, work, work. You know, (laughs) so uh, Toby asked me to tour manage this ABBA group. They had one original member. (laughs) It it was fun. It was in the summer. I don't remember even what Todd was doing. He might have been producing or something like that. but yeah, I, I just worked for, you know, I just 
was their tour manager. And that was kind of fun because people love the music. Oh, my God. We did a lot of outdoor shows. We played Red Rocks. And is that in Colorado? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. They had big audiences. I was like, whoa. You know? <laughs> when yeah. I was in music school, I was listening to Mahavishnu Orchestra, and I was friends with the violin player and his brother. So I was in a whole other realm of music. <laughs> But listening wise, that's why I didn't know who Todd was. But um, yeah, that was fun too. It was. It, I mean, I've had a great life. And you had a charmed life. Now, uh, yeah. somebody's, somebody's blowing me up on text saying, ask her about the Todd Healing album cover. Yeah. Oh, Very nice. oh that's because <laughs> <laughs> all those odd requests that I would get from Mr. Rundgren, um, he. He that was his concept, and but he wanted me he, to have a, he wanted a profile of his head and a hand coming down, like an angelic or God, whatever how you ever want to think of it. And um, so we had this factory in Woodstock, it's closed now, but they made prosthetic body parts for like EMTs to work with and things like that. Yeah. And they okay. were made out of this kind of silicone material. They looked really real. And I got an arm hey, hey, <laughs> with a hand. Hey, hey. And, and then um, I rented a Hasselblad camera because my ex-husband was a photographer and he had a Hasselblad. And I knew that was a really, it's a single lens, very expensive, very special camera. So I rented a Hasselblad because all I had was a teeny tiny junky camera. And uh, he set up the lighting and I just shot every F stop. You know, I was just like, because I didn't have any way. I didn't know how much light the camera, the film was picking up. But I just went click, click, change the F stops. If you know photography, mm -hmm. F stops control the amount of light. So, um and that was it. And we sent the film off and Warner Brothers picked that particular photo that, you know, the, the, it, I, first I thought, oh, God, they're all too dark. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Oh, no, it's too dark. But then when I saw the picture on the album cover, I realized, no, that's beautiful. It's just a silhouette of his face. It, it was actually a, a disappointment to me when I found out it was a prosthetic hand oh. because my my vision of that was that it was Todd's hand in a double exposure. <laughs> no. like he's the one healing himself. Oh, 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 was somebody oh, holding that the arm the hand? Oh, oh, I so I kind of ruined the illusion. No, right? it's fine. It's, yeah, people knew this already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not oh, the, the prosthetic hand anyway. No, his whole. head is bowed. Mm -hmm. His head is bowed, and that's whatever you want to refer to it. Maybe mm -hmm. angelic presence. Um, that was like supernatural hand, and it glowed from. Right. It, it just picked up enough yeah. light that a real hand wouldn't have looked the same. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was pretty happy with it. He was happy with it. I was. But that was it's always problem solving. <laughs> Can you get a hand? <laughs> oh, sure, you get a hand. <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, I thought that it looked great because I understood the meaning of the album. And, and I think at that time he was kind of stressed. And there's a video that we did for, I think it's called Channel 4, a British company. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the title. It was a whole long video piece that we did in the video studio. And they needed a nurse. And I, my daughter's a registered nurse. And I used her nurse's uniform. And he had me be the nurse. Although, I don't, to this day, I don't know why. He put big goggles on me. And that was okay. You know? It's it's but in I, the Tete. It's the tortured artist effect video. I remember that yes, scene. You yes, play the nurse in that that's scene. me. And you say you say there's nothing wrong. And I yeah, and right. and I we right. had to pretend, you know, that I was I don't know if I was drawing blood or what, but um and then I just said to him, There's nothing wrong, you know, mm -hmm. which was 
the message of that shot that he's worrying that there's some wrong something wrong and i'm telling him no you're fine and he was mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Well, at that time, in that time frame, John Lennon has just been murdered. And yes. His house was robbed. Yeah. He oh, and the robbery. And yeah. Robbed his house there was a, and yeah. Yeah. There was a lot there going was weird on. Stuff happening. Yeah. And then he, like, what I heard him say about it was he made that album at a point where he had to rejuvenate himself somehow. So the whole process was how he got himself out of that, you know, darkness. Amazing. It was a healing process for himself. Yeah, that's true. Well, what did you think about seeing it live 20, 30 years later, 40 years later, however long it was, uh, seeing healing live? Oh, it was beautiful. Oh my God. It was breathtaking. It, that, you know, I still watch it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. There's a DVD too. So yeah. I don't know people, you know, the, and the DVD, Todd claimed that fans voted on this, but that's not really what happened. <laughs> so the we fans were were? Kind of, that, that people voted for the healing album to be part of that tour, but that didn't oh. really happen. We never, we never had a vote. We, <laughs> we were trying to get Todd to do the Todd album and Hermit. And, Okay. Of course, since it wasn't his idea, he didn't like it. So we, yeah, you don't we, tell him what to do. No, no. So <laughs> we were trying to get a hit song, you know, because we hadn't had one yet. They watched it, you know. And so we kept going back and forth with Eric, and, and they came up with some other stuff, and they just kept going back and forth. And then Todd came out of nowhere and goes, healing. And Mel and I were like, that, that doesn't have a hit on it. That, that's nothing to do with anything we've been talking about. <laughs> He, they had, they had, oh, they had beat us down so bad. We said yes. It and I am so glad. Out being one of the greatest. It was. So I am good. so glad that he did because and the chorus, the chorus, and the choral director, whose name is escaping me right now, he was so good. And yes. the and the Indian, oh, the beautiful. Yeah. Those yeah. were Love Indian that wedding outfits that mm -hmm. the guys were dressed in. Yeah, he, so, he wanted to do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was all his idea. Yep. Oh, oh, it always is. I hate to tell yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, that's you where that's know, where Toticus, that's where Toticus came from. The whole thing. Yeah. You're you're talking about the time in the '80s. I was plugged in enough to hear that healing was in the process, so I knew okay. there was going to be an album called Healing, and it got into my brain, and that's where this whole dream about, the, you know, this guy, this little. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you got there? Yeah, going no, on sure. there. yeah, you can see them. Anyway, Ford wanted to do so. Okay, make me make me a poster for this this show, and I'm like, how do you make a poster for for Todd and Healing? How do you yeah. do that? And through that process, that's where where this Toticus image came from, and also a dream I had at that time, um, where he someone appeared out of this cloud, okay, in a mask. Okay. And they were coming after me, you know, Jesus, Paul's oh. up, take the mask <laughs> off, take the mask off, remove my mask. And I'm running and I'm screaming and I don't want to do it. This is, you know, right in that time, it's right in 1980. Wow. And when I finally took the mask off, it was me. Mm -hmm. ah. That's in a dream. Prisoner. Ah. Yeah. And so when yeah. Todd healing yeah. happened, I used that to create Toticus. That was like my, the dream from 1980 is now in 2010. The inspiration for the art and the live show and so cool hallelujah that was a great shirt that was a great design the um that that uh yeah tom hills was a hit people give me grief tom hills was a hit on healing i get it Fine. the dirt <laughs> they're mentioning dark hilliard in here i forgot he, he either texted me or emailed me the like a week ago or so i forgot i got to reply back um just check it in. You know, he checks in every now and then. I think Dirk would really love to do another orchestra show. I'm or sure type he show would. Like that. And, I'm and we, sure he would. We, yeah. we would love it. We talked to him. We went back with him about that several times, different things. But he, he, you could just tell he had the, like the time of his life doing those shows. It was so fun to watch yeah. him and, the, and yeah. the kids, especially. And even the adults, you know, they were adults. It's, uh, really enjoyed that group in Muskegon, you know. Mm-hmm. 
we're good. So no, okay. no, I know. Uh, and it's funny because um, I joined a big choral group at SUNY New Paltz, the State University at New Paltz. And, you know, I would tell Todd, you know, I still was tour managing whenever he needed me, but it worked out. I can't remember exactly. He was doing maybe a lot of producing then. And uh, I sang with an orchestra and how thrilling that is. And I would sing solos on occasion, which was extremely challenging for somebody who doesn't read music, but memorizes every note. Uh, that uh, I always thought his voice would sound amazing with an orchestra. And then suddenly Eric Garner, they started booking him with orchestras and yeah. it was really, really cool to be able to do some backup vocals with him and see Jesse in that setting, you know, mm -hmm. it was just, uh, it was a special time, you know, it's, it's a big deal to, to make all those arrangements, you know, and to mm -hmm. be able to rehearse with an orchestra and involve that many musicians. But it, anybody that heard those shows, that was a treat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesse at in Rockford, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. We heard of him late actually. He wasn't wasn't originally part of it. And uh that was that when was did you when did you meet when did you meet Jesse? Jesse? Yeah. Oh, um uh he be he replaced Lyle Workman did um the first one, uh nearly human, and then uh, Lyle wanted to move to LA. He's a very successful composer of mm -hmm. music for mm -hmm. film. That's what he does. And he recommended Jesse. And <clears throat> his various people were, you know, bucking, you know, they wanted the job. And, and ironically, Jesse grew up not far from where Todd grew up. And it mm -hmm. was always like his dream to work with Todd Rundgren. I didn't know him then, you know. And then uh, we were doing Second Wind, and I forgot to tell him he got the gig. <laughs> and Todd called me up and said, can you please tell him he got the gig? Yeah. <laughs> and so I had to call him up and go, uh, Jesse Grass, this is Mary Lou Arnold, and um, uh, you got the gig. You know, And I said, rehearsal starts tomorrow. <laughs> 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 but he was, he, you know, he had learned the whole album. <laughs> so he wasn't nervous about it. Did he, he, was that, just like, did really, he have to audition? I, hmm? Did he have no, to audition? No, he, he made a, 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 he recorded himself playing. I, he had literally learned every song wow. and he gave, I never heard it, but I heard that he gave Todd this cassette and said, listen to this. And, you know, it was him playing all the music. And so, uh, he hmm. was just so excited and happy. And Lyle told Todd, "This is the guy that you, he, this is the guy you should hire." You know? yeah. And yeah. and uh, yeah, we toured all over the country, back and forth. You know, and he was just so polite and kind. And when the tour ended, and I I didn't know what we never know what's next with Todd, hmm. right? And I said. Uh, well, I see, yeah, because I lived in Woodstock. He lived in in San Francisco. Um, but he invited me over for pizza and to watch a Japanese horror movie. Mm, that yeah. was fun. At a at a hotel in Pittsburgh, right? Because Jesse, yeah. Was How did you know that? We, Jesse oh, was yes. at the hotel, and he said, "This is where I had my first date with Mary Lou," and he was just and that's a, what, pizza lovely. and a Japanese horror movie and. And normally Todd would take over my room to have the end of tour party. And I said to Michelle, um, I need my room. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go? And then Todd was like, where's Lou? Uh -huh. Where's Jesse? <laughs> 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 and the rest is history. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. It was Pittsburgh. That's mm -hmm. funny. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm so subtle, you know, and private. Mm -hmm. But this, I guess people know. Whatever. Yeah, I need room. <laughs> so people are. That's, that's ninety two. Um, I remember Jesse yeah. the first time from the with a twist. 
because they did this whole play on the audience. Todd would Ooh. come out first and just they had a club. Would they made like a club setting. Looks, yeah. Yeah. They do like, is that Todd? Is that Todd? And then Todd comes out and that's, that's where we, it really got on my radar. Yeah. Um, and Jesse made all of those bus and over arrangements. He wrote all. Yes. Of those. Oh, wow. And I right. give him credit on yeah. the CD. Yeah. He credited him with that. Very yeah. Nice. There's a great photograph of the two of them sitting down with acoustic guitars in their lap and smiling and they just that photo. so happy. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Yeah, I love that photo. photo. I gotta find that it photo. It just looks really relaxed and they're sitting on a lanai or something. Mm -hmm. out. Yeah, it's a yeah. great mm -hmm. photo. Yeah, I there, was what? We have people in here and I just I'm gonna add to this, suggesting that you write a book and I'm thinking you could do a picture book too. Who, you me? A whole I'm story. Gonna write stories. A book. Everybody keeps asking me to write a book. I'm not going to write a book. No. We'll find the photos for you. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you can find photos. You know, this photo you're talking about could be in there. Well, right. well, she's an artist. She can illustrate it. Yeah, right. yeah there you go. <laughs> I, I, you, I know it sounds crazy, but I thought by retiring, which I am, uh, I thought. I'd have all this time, but the mm -hmm. days are just flying by. And, and of course, you know, there was a lot of legal stuff to deal with, like a mountain yeah. of it. Um, yeah. But that's all pretty much done now. Yeah. But um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of reluctant, you know, to put it to paper. I have, you know, so many amazing memories and thoughts about my career with Todd. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly wouldn't be a tell-all. Sorry, kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. No, no. Um, but there's aspects of what it was like. You know, some people used to say to me, oh, you should write a book about tour managing. Because when I did that, uh, there weren't very many women tour managers. I worked with men. So I always wore a black suit. I carried my briefcase and I was business only. And so... I guess, you know, that's an interesting aspect. Now there are a lot of women to our managers, mm -hmm. you know, kind of broke that glass ceiling. And, but people thought I should write a book about tour managing, but I'm completely self-taught. I mean, it's like, I thought I invented notes under the door. That's <laughs> how funny I am. Because I thought, well, if I put a note under their door before I go to bed, they'll know what the next day is about. You know, and then I watched Madonna's movie and her tour manager was putting notes <laughs> under the door. And I realized- He copied you. <laughs> but I really, literally, I asked Todd, we were going to Newark Airport with Utopia. And I said, uh, okay, what does a tour manager do? And he, you know what he said? You'll figure it out. That was, it. That was all the clues Dang. I had. You know, it was like, okay. okay. Right. Got it. So I'll figure it out. Yeah. You did figure it out. He was right. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I came. I was raised in a very strict family, and I have a brother, a young, a year younger than me, who's brilliant, a brilliant mathematician, physicist, who worked on the Hubble Space Telescope, wow. Robert Arnold, and he's genius type. And mm. so I was kind of accustomed to it. You know, it's like mm. my dad was really, really strict, and everything was mind over matter. Hmm. mind hmm. over matter and my mother was very very spiritual hmm. so I had quite a combination of my spiritual beliefs and mind over matter strength hmm. and discipline yeah it's all about you just you have to be very very disciplined and know what you're doing at all times if, if you will you will for nothing you, can withstand your will yeah it, <laughs> somebody yeah. said that Yes, he did. He said that. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, I was raised that way. Yeah. My father, um, even though I was kind of a sickly child, I've climbed every one of the mountains here in Wood, outside of Woodstock because in the summer we would spend our summers. It was a summer cottage house, like a, almost a house, kind of funky, but <laughs> very different from growing up on Long Island, but he would, we would climb those mountains mm -hmm. without any food or water. And if you cried, he'd give you a lifesaver. <laughs> 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 but 
but I didn't think it was weird. He knew where all the springs were. He loved the mountains. He loved the woods. And uh, there was this one summer where the springs were drying up. And that was a little tough because, yeah, we didn't have water. The <laughs> <laughs> huh? You know, he said, you know <laughs> he did all this stuff at such a young age. Mm. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for this, you know, knowing how to overcome things. And, and I think a lot of young people today are kind of lost with so much. Uh, we, we, I did, we, you know, when I grew up <laughs> ages and ages ago, um, we didn't have Facebook or, you know, we, we played in the trees. We rode our bikes and you come know. home when the street lights come on. Yeah, and he had to be home before dark, especially. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Hmm. And uh, we had chores, and you know, it was just, you know, that's just what you did. And and I I excelled in school, and my brother did as well. I mean, he was so smart; he got perfect scores in mathematics and physics. And they thought hmm. he cheated and made him take the test <laughs> over again when he did his SATs. Oh my God! Wow, that's smart. Did he do him again? Yeah, they thought he'd somehow gotten a copy of the test. Yeah, of course he didn't. Scores. He was just brilliant. Yeah, and he got perfect scores. Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> That's and then they apologized. And, you know, I think my father was really upset that they would question him, you know, because they were giving him special courses and classes in mathematics to begin with in high school. And I was singing the lead in all the musicals, you know, <laughs> that's what I did. And I, and I, I loved art and I majored in art, but that was so my parents said I would have security. If I was a teacher, I could always teach. And it did come in handy. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> Where did your brother go to college? Did he get like a scholarship? He, he got a full scholarship after that. Yeah. And he, he married his high school sweetheart and she was in going to a college in upstate New York, so he he chose Clarkson, and it was in a really cold part of New York State. That's way up. But he stuck it out. But he was immediately upon completing his bachelor's, he was immediately hired and made it. Um, you know, uh, I forget how they have the status of physicists, but. Yeah, you know, he he didn't even have to get a master's. He was just like boom, wow. put to work. And then he and then he worked on the mirror for the Hubble. And, and is it all right if I keep talking? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, this is a funny story. I was on, of course, I was on the road with <laughs> is it all right? God and Utopia. And we we're sitting around somebody's house in a pool. And I heard the news that the image was a little blurry. So I called up my brother, you know, like, hey, what <laughs> happened? <laughs> you know? And truth be told, he couldn't talk about it. He, The government said he couldn't discuss any of it for a number of years, but now he can, so I can talk about it too. But uh, he just said, on the phone, he just, I'm out in California, he's in New York. And he goes, look, nobody died. OK, <laughs> and this is what's going to happen because he had created his own test equipment and had tried to tell upper management that there's something that needed to be tweaked because there are these cameras that interface with the with the mirror, which was the most perfect mirror ever created by man at that point. And uh, they wouldn't listen to him. Hmm. So. When that happened, he's you know he went in with these mega computers at Perkin Elmer in Connecticut, and my my sister in law said he was just driven. He, he was going to find this flaw, and he did. Wow! And he found he went way way back in the history of the project, and it was a tiny mathematical error by someone who no longer worked at Perkin Elmer. It wasn't even working on the telescope. Wow. But that tiny, you know, they worked in infinitesimal measurements. Right. Um, that just, you know, so he said, don't worry. You know, we're going to, you know, you'll see. We'll have this thing. It'll look like a big telephone booth. Remember, we used to have telephone booths? Oh, yeah. Telephone booth. And the cameras will be reconfigured. 
The mirror is perfect. The cameras have to be reconfigured. And by God, everything he told me came true. If mm. you watch the launching and the astronauts switching out the big thing that looked like a telephone booth, and putting <laughs> in the new one, and that was all exactly what happened. And then, of course, then they go, oh, that thing's still sending incredible photos. I mean, they thought it would be over with and done and self-destruct by now. No, no, it's still up there. Okay. And it's still sending back those pictures. They're just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, now you have the other one that's I mean, further out in space that's made up of multiple mirrors, you know, and so the whole, and, you know, uh, what you call it? I guess you'd call it an industry. <laughs> Space exploration has advanced <laughs> since the yeah. Hubble. But that's my story about Robert Arnold. Nice. <laughs> Good story. <laughs> Good things in that family. You yeah. write a book. <laughs> I mean, it it is. Uh, it was an interesting way to grow up, and an even more interesting way to spend forty years of my life working for Todd. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't even express, uh, I'm just so lucky. I'm just like, what were the odds? I, I was this girl singer in a band in a bar, you know? <laughs> 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 but uh, he saw something in me. It's, you know, he, he somehow knew that I could do all that stuff. I mean, it was, it was a lot, a lot of different jobs, yeah. you know? production managing and working with the bands that he was producing and driving to the Kennedy airport, which is not my favorite thing to do, <laughs> but picking them up and bringing them back up to his house here. And I was a little sad when he left and moved to Sausalito. Uh, I was still working with him, but it wasn't the same, but my, my mom and dad were aging and I was the executor of my family's affairs. And I have actually, two younger sisters and I had a brother as well who was sickly. And so they needed me and yeah. I stayed, I didn't go. Good for you. Oh, well, but Aren't that's you all right. Aren't you glad though? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I needed, I needed to take care of my family and my daughter and my help my mom and dad. And um, my, my mom passed when she was only 76. So, um, my wow. dad lived to be 94. Wow. My daughter says I have to watch the Blue Zone videos mm -hmm. so I can le learn how to live to be 110. It's on Netflix. <laughs> I watch them, yeah. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know about living to be 110. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure about that. But, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed because, uh, ironically, I'm in perfect health. Go figure. Excellent. Excellent. I got deconditioned. That's what my cardiologist calls it. After putting me through every stress test they could make me do, <clears throat> he decided that I should join a gym uh, because what happened was just the stress. It was over three years of the struggle that Jesse and I had with his health and the, then the transplant and then the chemo. And ugh, yeah. So uh, I just got weaker and weaker, you know, and now I'm, I have a personal trainer. Oh, look at you. <laughs> celebrity of me. <laughs> how, how did, how did COVID affect you? Did you lose your taste of smell? Or was it easy for you or hard for you? No, I just got really, really sick for yeah. about a week and a half. And then I got better. That was it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you. it was so weird because Jesse, because Jesse's body was so fragile um, for so long, you know, we were so super, super careful mm -hmm. and neither one of us ever got COVID. Mm -hmm. But I think I had just kind of, my body had just hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. So, and that was hard, you know, uh, because nobody here, he had left, he passed or as some of my friends call it, transitioned. Mm -hmm. And and I'm in the house by myself and my daughter had and son-in-law had flown up. Didi came with her husband and they couldn't see me. Nobody oh, oh, me. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I had quite a challenge of mm -hmm. you know, not only being really sick, but you know, keeping 
my spiritual self okay you know that i just thought no i'm gonna get through this you know i'm just gonna get through this yeah and i promised jesse there you go how often do you um do you get on uh uh Jesse Gress's King page. I think you're, I see you on there. Yes, I do still. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was such a cool thing that, yeah. that, I mean, I can't express my gratitude enough to so many friends and family and fans. You know, when we had the GoFundMe, that was the first big blow, the fatal, uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis it's called and everybody thought it was because he smoked cigarettes but the doctor said no because what had happened was he had pneumonia and i knew he did because i had pneumonia as a child and i kept telling him you got to go to the doctor no 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 he kept working gigging you know and then then he got um the flu the bad strain the really bad on top of the pneumonia he's got the flu yeah. and then he got sepsis any normal human being would have died right okay. there. Mm -hmm. And he nearly did. It was a close call. It was really, really close. And that was the first challenge. Um, but that had damaged his lungs. And mm -hmm. that's why he needed the transplant. And then, boop, he's back on stage in yeah. a white tux and happy as could be. Mm -hmm. And his doctors, they asked if they could use that video of when Todd let him make a speech to the audience. Mm -hmm. And he said, sure, you know, cause sometimes people get scared when they realize they're going to have a transplant. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, and mm -hmm. he was kind of like the poster boy for New York <laughs> Presbyterian, you know, cause they were so ha He was so happy. And that was amazing that Todd did that. That he let him make the speech. Yeah, I, I was just saying to my husband, "This is huge." His yeah, God is, is giving Jesse the mic. It's well, and it was funny because I, of course, I was there, and 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 he was talking to Chasm, and he said, "I'm going to ask Todd to let me because one of his doctors was in the audience, mm -hmm. and he wanted to thank them. Mm -hmm. He was so filled with gratitude, mm -hmm. and he said to Kaz, i 'I'm going to ask Todd if I can.'" say something you know my doctor's out here and i want to say something and introduce her and tell a little story about it and chasm says oh you can't do that don't ask todd for, oh no 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 you're going to interrupt the show but he did it he asked todd and todd said sure oh nice sure you can that's and that's one of those things about todd you hear these stories about oh he's such a you know egomaniac and egocentric <laughs> tyrant and you know there's bands that you know and the whole XTC thing, you hear all these stories. Oh, and then there's this other part that people don't see. Like he toured with Ian Hunter doing a um campaign for uh for John Anderson for president. I guess uh -huh. you would have been involved with that. I oh, remember I seeing that, that show and seeing Todd was just so generous with like everybody else is doing all these things. And I heard people coming out of the concert saying, like, oh well, that Ian and you know, Ian Hunter, he sure showed Todd up, you know. It's like you guys don't even know this much about what Todd Rundgren can do. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I see these things where he is incredibly generous and there's times he's, there's live shows and mm -hmm. the spotlights following him off state, you know, following him around. He knows it's the, you know, Jesse's moment or whatever. And he literally leaves the stage. So the spotlight has to go. Where yeah. To go. They want, so, it wasn't a, a lot of solos for Jesse. <laughs> and then, but he, he tried to work it in there where, and then there were times, well, there's that one piece where he just lets Jesse go crazy <laughs> and it's so funny. And he's at the piano and then he taps the piano, tap, 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 you know, like scolding him. They were like two peas in a pod, those two. Yeah. They were so yeah. much alike. And, and, but Jesse, Todd treated Jesse like, you know, his kid brother. He'd give him shit sometimes. And I'd think, oh, God, you know. But then, you know, I knew how my relationship with my brilliant brother was like, sometimes we were like, mm, I'm going to get you. <laughs> but for the most part, even pictures, there was, I was doing a signing with Todd, you know, and someone put down a photo of Todd when he was younger and Todd just looked at me and said, look at this. And it, you would have thought it was Jesse. I mean, it looks so much like Jesse. 
so I mean, there was some bond that they had. I mean, I was really happy with what Je Todd wrote when Jesse passed. Oh, him. my God. I cried for days. Yeah, me too. Was, <laughs> definitely Todd. Yeah. Todd, I mean, know, that's the soul the of the man. I mean, you, you know, yeah. I mean, everybody gets exhausted and tired and he's not always comfortable socially. But, you know, you can't judge him on that. I mean, that, you know, when he referred to Jesse as a musical mystic. Mm, you know, I know. Uh, I, I, I he put it out there that he knew he knew how special Jesse was. Yeah. He did. And, and even he said, though, uh, he'll hmm? never, what did he say? He'll always be, will never be replaced or something. Yeah. He could I never be replaced. He's taken it with him. That's what, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I, I just bawled when I got <laughs> And the picture of the guitar on the chair, it was just, oh. That was a, a Danny O'Connor photo that we had and that was um, the perfect way. Chris Anderson worked on the video with me and I, I was combing through photos, combing through photos and video. And, you know, cause Jesse was also in the Tony Levin band and they got a Grammy nomination that it was mm. like amazing. He was the only guitar player in the band and Tony was just blown away and, and, they went to Moscow. They played in Russia. I mean, wow. they they wow. really, it was a great mm -hmm. band while it lasted. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, there's a photo that I used that Tony Levin took of him at that time in his life. And then we were at um, some big place. I think it was Alabama, something like that. It was a crazy resort type place. And we each had little, the band members had little houses like, and that, I don't know when Danny took that shot, but it, um, it was just so perfect. I think Chris Anderson, I, I said, look at this, Chris, there's his little, he would only use a flip phone. He refused to have a smartphone. He had a flip phone. <laughs> okay. And you know, everything was there, but he was gone his phone, his little tiny wallet that he insisted had to be tiny. And it was just so perfect. It was the perfect thing. It was just like, okay, he's left us, but he's there. I mean, he's playing with Jeff Beck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad you noticed that photo. I mean, it was really oh, important to me yeah. that it be included. You know, because it just spoke of Jesse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, he was fun, though. I mean, he really was fun. He was really funny. He was funny. Yeah. He had a great sense of humor. Yep. Yeah. He was very funny. Yeah. He was, you know, George Cowan was over the day before he passed, and the, we had gotten the hospital bed in the living room, and he was watching the TV. And this commercial came on for spam. And <laughs> <laughs> and George starts singing the song from Monty Python, the Monty Python song, Spam a lot of. So he was singing Spam, 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 Spam. And we thought Jesse was asleep, but all of a sudden he just cracked up laughing. And that's when we realized that even if he was lying there with his eyes closed, he was present. He was totally present mm -hmm. until the minute he left. So then that, you know, and then we realized, oh, you could hear. Yeah, everything. you said, watch what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say? <laughs> He's listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what a, what a gift for me, I mean, to work so closely with Todd for so 40 years. I mean, that's yeah, just. Yeah. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. It just happened. <laughs> and you don't do anything with him now? Are you not doing anything? Is it all Live Nation or somebody? It's, no, I didn't book the shows. I mean, that, you know, that's. I mean, um, they, they had a tour manager, I know, during the Utopia thing. That yeah. Uh, the tour uh, manager, but... No, I, I'm. Uh, Paul Farola is the mm -hmm. tour manager. Okay. And they get along really well because Paul yeah. has kind of. Todd's sensibility. Like if you see you, mm -hmm. if you send him an email, you might get three words back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
but so far so good. So yeah. they seem comfortable together. And Paul did that uh, Daryl Hall tour with Todd, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that, you know, that was great because Paul would, you know, fly with him, drive him, get the rental cars and just take care of Todd. Mm -hmm. And, and then uh, of course, you know, Todd got to play with Daryl's band, which he knew, you know, uh, he knew those guys because we went out mm -hmm. to Daryl's house for that live from Daryl's house thing that he was yeah. doing for a while there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Paul's and, been around a while. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a great show. I saw them in Connecticut and yeah. I was just like, Oh, this is good. This is good. This is, <laughs> yeah. And I think it was good for Todd. You know, big yeah. audiences. They did really, really mm -hmm. well. Kind of an easy gig yeah. for him too, to show up and play a few songs and sing really didn't have to yeah. schlep anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the, what a great deal for Todd because mm -hmm. yeah, it was Daryl's. I, I thought Todd band. was, was more comfortable with the band than Daryl was. Daryl was <laughs> yeah. having a fit I with the sound guy the whole time. And yeah. it wasn't just the one show. It seemed like it kept going on and on. Todd's part was just the butter. Mm -hmm. The band is fabulous. Well, yeah, I think Todd is, I mean, he's such an incredible singer and he's, and he's amazing performer. His stage presence is just like, you know, off the chart. <laughs> he's really good. So yeah. I think for him, you know, it was pleasurable. And I don't know Daryl Hall well, you know, I've met him a couple of times, you know, Jesse introduced me. Hey, Daryl, come here and meet my beautiful wife. <laughs> that was it. And he'd go, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really know Daryl that well, but I think Todd was super comfortable in that setting. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's doing just his own material. He does, you know, no cover tunes or anything like that. He got to just do the best of Todd mm -hmm. and the audience loved it. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many shows you guys went to, but you know, it seemed that, you know, he's, he got a great response from the audience as well. Yep. So that was good to a see. Todd fans went to the Daryl shows. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Todd fans went to those shows. Yeah. Well, now I guess who's Daryl out with? He's doing another tour. Elvis Costello. Elvis Costello. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Heck. Yeah. Yeah. So he's kind of found a niche, you know, that you know, by having another artist, oh, yeah. I, I think it makes Daryl. Besides John. <laughs> it leaves the pressure off of him. <laughs> he, he, uh, it, yeah. So, I like it when, uh, I like it when Ringo and Daryl, Decide to move on so that we can get Todd coming out for a me we tour or some oh. other Todd tour. Yeah, I know. It's I get it. It's good crazy. money for him, but it's like, come on already. Let's get back well, out. Well, I Todd think the Ringo thing was good on a lot of levels for Todd yeah. because he got, you know, sure. I'm sure he made a lot of money. I don't know. I was yeah. not tour managing that. Yeah. And yeah. and he got to fly in a private jet, you know. It was like nice. whole, another whole level of yeah. you know, acknowledgement. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. It was good to have him back. Enough yeah. already, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. if he was doing those funny songs and the unpre unpredictable show, uh, I mean, you can blame Jesse for a lot of that. Oh, Jesse yeah. would find all these quirky. Now songs. you tell me. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we can't beat him up now. <laughs> now I can't get any grief. Yeah, but the blur up his like, email. Oh, Todd loved him. You know, he would I'll give bet. him these goofy yeah. songs to hear, and then mm -hmm. Todd started investigating, finding his own goofy songs, and the two. I don't. I don't, like, don't want to get you in trouble. Do huh? you know anything about this tour coming up? I don't want to get you in trouble, but do you know anything? No, about I don't. No, no, I honestly don't. don't. I don't. No, think I, Todd really, knows. I don't. I. Hmm? I don't think yeah. Todd knows. <laughs> uh, I think it's more utopia oriented, right? Oh, I cool! I don't good. know though. I, remember, I I I can't speak of it, and yeah. and and Paul Farrell is being very tight lipped. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> he's but he not was, telling me yeah. anything. But um, I just felt I I mean now it's over a year since Jesse passed, but believe me, wow, <laughs> I was not long. in good shape <laughs> after mm -hmm. that happened because it wasn't supposed to happen like that. And the, yeah. the poor on, young oncologists gave him 
a full dose of chemo and it was disastrous. Too much. Mm. Oh, yeah. And he cried. He oh. cried and apologized to us and cried and cried. Oh my God. It was like, oh. what do you do? You know, it's like, oh my God, this poor man. And my poor husband, <laughs> who's now, he's definitely not going to survive it. So oh, we knew that. We knew. Um, but both of us, like I said, we both have a strong spiritual foundation. And so, you know, he's with the angels. And, but yeah. I was still, even with all of my faith, I was still pretty shaken of by course. it. Of course. There's no women. Yeah. And I figured, you know, I just turned 82. Come on. Really? I have to keep working? You know? yeah. <laughs> and, and I just thought maybe it's time for me to pass the baton to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I was sure who he would pick, Todd, you know, who he would ask next. But, um, but Paul seems to be managing it. I mean, he's really organized and he has that closed personality, which is, but in some ways I can understand you know, yeah. it's, you know, uh, the stress of just keeping the focus, your focus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was seldom you would see me out at bars or, you know, just chatting up the fans. I left that to Michelle. <laughs> 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 She's an expert at that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, you can't really spread yourself too thin. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you might come off as a Lou for, you know, you never did that friendly, but I no. tried to be kind to everybody. I, would Very say, nice. I usually see you in the morning before anybody else got up, you'd be getting your coffee and you'd be working on your, you'd have your notebooks out. And it was usually in the morning when you were. Yeah, you know, well, exactly. Um, yeah. I would be the last one to sleep and the first one up. Yeah. yeah. It's true. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and that's okay. Except at one point, God, it was about 14 years ago, I did get cancer. And my uh, my doctor said, my oncologist said, what do you do for a living? And I said, uh, I'm a rock and roll tour manager. <laughs> he said, uh, you got to back off of that. You know, my yeah. immune system was so depleted from lack of sleep, although I didn't feel bad doing it. I was just, I had this ability to just keep going no matter what. And um, then Todd made a new title for me. Then I became tour director. So I would so work at home um, a lot of the time, although I would come out, you know, you'd probably see me, whoop, whoop, I'm out, I'm gone, I'm out, I'm gone. You know? And, you know, it's like working seven days a week at home, but I would get more rest. Right. And I am fine. Very good. Pretty good. <laughs> or as my doctor said, better than good. <laughs> That's good. good. I know. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. <laughs> you look great. I yeah. do? Oh, yes. Thanks. Do. 82. Crazy. I know. I, I think I thought a lot of people knew I was older than Jesse. And I got accused. You know, it's like men can have younger wives. And everybody, like, oh, bravo, bravo. She's yes. 20 years younger than you. Yay. Yeah. You know, but if, you know, if a woman has the, uh, well, Tina Turner was always my hero because her husband was 16 years younger than her. <laughs> and, and so not just that, I just thought she was great. Right, right. Um, but, you know, it was kind of funny. A lot of people didn't realize how old I was. No, I we knew you were advertising it. <laughs> well, it's not their business anyway, but. Cougar Lou. What's your new name, Cougar Lou? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I just you know I'm amazed that I had 40 years. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just phenomenal. That's that's a long run. That's a that's legacy. book material. That's okay. book material. That's a, oh, there you go with the book thing again. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> well, I know we're we're um we're very excited that you're going to make it to Akron and come see everybody. I, I know I agreed, so I got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> yep, we're very excited though. I'm probably just gonna drive out there. I, I mean, yeah. 
I fly when I go to Florida, but it's like seven hours plus. But I like yeah. driving on highways. Isn't that weird? Sure. Veggie, I mean, you've I driven it. Very calming. Yeah. I'm driving. Yeah, yeah, Veggie drives it. We got a lot of people drive it from that area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, my daughter's a nervous wreck and she wanted to come with me. But as it turns out, and she was going to, but now she can't because Boo. her husband's mother and his aunt, I don't know, there's some big fam. They're all showing up in Florida and she has oh. to be there. She can't. That's she too bad. We like her too. Me. Yeah. Yeah. But were a lot of fun. She's bummed because she wants... She's always after me to sing. Oh, mom, you gotta sing. Hey, listen, Mary Lou. What? We watch um, the live stream. We don't have a we don't have a contract from it. We're gonna live stream this thing. She can watch it. <gasps> She'll be so happy. Yeah, we're gonna live stream it. It'll be awesome. We got multi camera shoot with Maurice in the background. All kind of good stuff. But yeah. but I'm not very you know utopia-ish. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm gonna it's come out and do, in utopia music. I'm gonna yeah. do compassion. Always. But he did. Todd did perform that song with you. Did he? Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. Now it's oh, not yeah. just Saturday utopia. Night Live, didn't he? Yeah. What? Didn't he do that on Saturday Night Live? Compassion. No, he did Healer and uh, Tiny Demons. Yeah. Oh, oh, man, you're yeah, on top of his head. Encyclopedia but, right there. <laughs> yeah, wow. I guess so. You got <laughs> time, he did time heals. So a lot of it's kind of a blur. He did time heals. He did time heals and healer. That's I knew he, he did healer. Time heals, yeah. Time, time heals. Yeah. It, that's, but, you know, Mary Liz, it's not, we just, you know, we like to come up with themes, and but it's always different stuff. We have people do new cars. You know, they do it all. Naz, it's not always just one thing. So you'll see yeah. it all. You're well, I mean, I mean, that it was actually James that said, why don't you do this? Yeah, do that's a good choice because by James. We he appreciate had, it. <laughs> he had sung that himself. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the band. And so, and I thought, well, that's good because there's not going to be a lot of time to rehearse. And if they already know the song, it makes it easier. Oh yeah. yeah, they're a real good band. You'll be yeah, real impressed. Yeah. Well, yeah. Was, I'm sure it'll be fun. I'll absolutely, that's the that's the main thing. It's gonna be a good yeah. time. It'll be fun. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I, I when I heard you were you were bringing uh, Maurice and all that stuff, I thought, oh, yeah. am I doing something kind of a bummer song here? <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> not in the least. No. We can cover Maurice up when you do that song if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I love that album and I love the message and yeah, you know, it just, uh, just touched my heart. I can't. Okay, Mister Encyclopedia, what year did? The album Healing come out. Do you know? Ooh. 1980. I don't even it, was, it was 81. Because I was living in Cleveland and um, it was before I was, yeah, 81. I want to say. 81. Yeah. So okay. It was 80 or 81. Yeah. Wow. 80. Because I walked into Topia Video, like I said, in January 1980. So I'd only known Todd for a year. You know, well, like you never know how long he works on albums before they come out, um, yeah. because he's always working on stuff, and that's why when the albums are out, he gets tired of touring with it and moves on before the album, you know, <laughs> gels. It takes six months for people to figure out what he was doing. Yeah. And um, I can remember when that album came out, I went to a record store. Here I, I've got a Todd Rundgren T-shirt on, right? Uh -huh. I'm in the store on the first day it's available. And they actually were playing it in the store. Cleveland's huge. Oh. Todd. Area. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And I'm buying the album, and the guy behind the counter says, "I don't know about this one. I don't. I don't think this is that great." <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? You know, <laughs> I don't care what you think. Well, about because but, <laughs> way to sell a record. I'm sure yeah. people. He doesn't create music to make he a doesn't. ton of money. I mean, no. there's something that comes that touches him. And that, you know, you'd have to know a little more about him personally to understand, like you apparently understand that 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 album well, was. I've heard him. I've heard him describe it before that a lot of people have an attitude about him because of the music. And he says he will he'll work on all the hard parts, work it out in the song and put that out. So that way it kind of comes off as this 
super confident, super, you know, together. And he's like, well, that's good because that's where he's trying to get to. But the music yeah. is a process for him. And then it becomes this therapeutic thing for the fans. They're just like, you you plug yourself into that hole. And all those things that he's doing give you that that focus and direction and that you can filter out all the crap that's really making you feel bad. And that's that's why it's so good for you is because you do the uh, work. Yeah. I, he's not trying to crank out hits, obviously. No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a message. It's his way of communicating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so funny to me that Bang the Drum was like, <laughs> like a throwaway song. And yeah. what's the song that everybody knows? You know, I'll say, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, who do you work for? Todd Rundgren. Todd who? Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of Todd who's. And, and I'd say, bang the drum. Oh, I know that song. Green you know? Packers. <laughs> it's like, yeah. well, you might want to listen to some yeah. of this other what stuff. What is this for? <laughs> yeah. It just didn't seem. It just didn't seem like that was that was justice. It wasn't no. fair, <laughs> you know. Like but that's a lot of beautiful know. stuff he's written. Mm -hmm. You know, the amazing pieces he's composed and mm -hmm. the gift that he has is like. Oh, bang the drum and that you know, uh, he played that's it. why i was telling i was talking with uh with veggie earlier about how are you gonna do this show we're gonna build the raw set for like 150 people for one night and we're like yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna do that because the people who said there, that to you does who, todd know you're doing all this i don't know <laughs> no probably <laughs> we'll not find out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll want to use the raw set for this next night. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. We'll leave it up there. It's up. We're building it out of cardboard, my part out of cardboard. So, <laughs> okay. Hey, we're Grace in. Uh, real. Uh, Grace is yeah. real. The real head, the real chin, you know, the yeah. real whatever the headpiece is. The real Maurice. Yeah. All the rest of it, the Sphinx, the, the decorations on the side, and the pyramid. I've only seen videos of that show. It's so. been quite a challenge to figure out exactly how tall it is and how far play, far apart the steps are. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be climbable. I mean, but, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, but, but is this in the context of, um, is it more like a utopia night or what? Well, the way I'm looking at it is it's 50 years of utopia. Right. And, oh, 50 uh, and okay, so yeah. any time, any utopia incarnation, I figure that's fair game. But the biggest, yeah. baddest, most spinal tap thing we can do is, <laughs> is rebuild the raw set. So, <laughs> so Mary, but fun. Mary Lou, the um, secret society band does mostly utopia stuff. So that's part of it too, you know, but the other band does mostly Todd stuff. So it's a mix of everything. Um, okay. We just like we just like having the Sphinx. It's a cool thing, you know. I'm amazed and, that sure. you know Chris Anderson's kept it for all. He these helped years. us out. Yeah, he repurposed it for us. The whole time. <laughs> they didn't have it the whole time. No, I, I had yeah. it for a couple of years. You did? Yeah. Where do you have a big garage? I had a. I used to live in an old church. Oh my God! I we never had the knew whole thing that. with the pyramid and this. We had everything. Everything. Now you should write a book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mary and Chris can write a book about Maurice. <laughs> I remember when, um, when the the guy who I lived with and he was he was he wanted the um the set gone after I moved out a few years later. He wanted it gone. I think he contacted you or Jesse to. But I mean, it got out of there somehow. I'm not sure. Wow! He must, have got, he must have found Chris Anderson or something to take so it back. So someone just brought it up. Someone's making a run at trying to get the Hall of Fame to take Maurice. Yes, I've been contacted about that, but then of course I don't really have the clout to. I would, have love, an I would like to give them the chest and the four keys, which I do have. I would love yeah. for the Hall of Fame. Are to you going to bring the chest to our party too? Yes, yes, yes. It will, it will fit in my car. I bought a Prius. Oh, make it, it rent a car, rent a van. Yeah, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh -uh. Well, it'll be interesting. How much will it cost? We'll have the fans pay for it. Yeah, veggie. Come it'll on. be interesting to see uh, how the Hall of Fame responds to Maurice. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the, that idea. I uh, uh, Somebody called me about that, wanting to know if I mm -hmm. could help, but I have no contacts with. Uh, the rock and roll well, I, I still that, have these delusions of grandeur that we're gonna the fans are gonna finally do something big enough 
that people are like, <laughs> really? I mean, how? Yeah. You know, it's going to be right there. It's going to be in Akron. It's only 45 minutes from Cleveland. It's uh -huh. going to look great. You know, you're going to have all this camera work on it. Yeah. Maybe it'll but be. I want to shake it up. Get a little attention. I wonder mm -hmm. how the Hall of Rock people feel about Todd. He didn't show up. Oh, well, yeah. he's in. But he's in. Doesn't matter how they feel yeah. about him. He's in. They're selling. They're selling stuff with his picture on it. So well, Todd gets yeah. a lot of crap for his attitude towards it, but he's always had that attitude. Yeah, he's it's, always expressed yeah, it. Yeah, it's and it's then you get other people. Deal. Deal. And, and I thought it was kind of cool that Patty Smith was the one chosen to she did a beautiful mm -hmm. job. represent him because mm -hmm. they yeah. were very dear friends. I hear in the early days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's cool. so cool. <laughs> That's he's, very cool he's not the only one that feels that way about it. it's called the rock and roll hall of fame and yet there's rap and country and all this other stuff why don't you just make it the pop hall of fame Madonna, the yeah. music yeah. hall of fame or, okay. yeah it kind of got off the track it, it the wheels left the track <laughs> <laughs> but todd did say I mean, we don't want more, more recent there now we don't have to worry about it anymore. We can everybody can just be quiet about it. He's in. Move on. You know. I don't know if this is true, Mary Lou, but um, I think Rob Nett told me. Lynn Rob Nett told me that when we had A Watts in Akron and Todd did the signing at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. that that was the biggest audience they ever had, including Kiss. Wow. Well, there wasn't a concert. There wasn't a concert it happened. It was, it was just a wrapped around that ball. Yeah. They had more That's fans cool. show up for that than any other artist at the, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. I can believe turnout. that. I, well, Cleveland's always been a stronghold oh, yeah. for him. And we always had great turnouts for every show that he did there. Yeah. Always, always, always. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, um, I don't know that much about it, but I know Todd had talked about, you know, they have a panel of guys and and uh, that make these decisions and yeah. it's not, you know, I know the fans, you know, they did so much trying to get him inducted, you know, and, and, and voted and voted and voted. And, but that it's not really the not fans. Really right. The fan, the fan collective account amounts to like one vote out of a thousand. Yeah. So uh, but you know, made some noise. One, one thousand. They, yeah, they did. They did. They did. They made made noise. And yeah. if anybody deserved to be in it, he did. I mean, yeah, that was you know, hands down. I mean, the man's a brilliant, absolutely brilliant composer, singer, performer. I mean, he does it all. And well, how they could just ignore him for so long, it was like, ugh. You know, but he didn't, he didn't let it get to him. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you know, he was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Mary Lou, do you still drive a Subaru? Yes, I do. Because the, the, the chest might fit in. <laughs> oh, but I don't have the Outback anymore. Oh. That self destructed. Jesse and I were up in Boston at an event up in Boston. I remember. Singing some background vocals and that was our party. Yeah, you're. And we're yeah, driving. It's a we're lizard driving lounge. On the highway, you yep. know, going home back to Woodstock, <laughs> and smoke's coming into the cabin of the car, and so I, oh God, we got to pull over. We got to pull over. There's something going on, and it turned out the frame of the the car broke, and it was oh. and it was against the tire, and. Mm you know, scraping, scraping and burning. And, and we made it to a Ford dealership. They tried to sell us a car. And, and then we got it towed to another guy who said, uh, nope. not worth mm -hmm. the money of trying to fix this. Mm -hmm. So we had to say goodbye. My sister came from Rhode Island and picked us up and we got a rental car. And then we bought a Crosstrek, a Subaru Crosstrek. And I'm still driving it. it might, so will that it work, might will that work Reggie? Let's do yeah. some dimensions. Mary Lou, that party yeah. was a, <laughs> I mean, was are you taking the New York State Thruway? No, gonna I'm going to go. I'm not, honey. Oh, okay. I'm going down. You know, I talked to Paul, and the best way for me to go is to take go down to 8484 over to 80 straight to Akron. Oh, okay. There you go. If you can take the Thruway, you go right through Rochester, and I'm going to oh, stick it in just, there. 
just put the word out on Run Good Radio. Whoever gets the whoever can. There might get be the somebody chat. coming on the thruway. You never know. Maybe Tom Jennings can bring it. Tom Jennings is coming. He it, lives near you. Whoever can. whoever can get the chest there, we will 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 let them. You know, smash the glass mm. guitar or something. You know. There you go. Mayor Lou, that, uh, that party. <laughs> you were with uh, Greg Hawks and Dirk. We're singing with you. Remember. And uh, Jesse yeah. played with Gary Backstrom and Pohada. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. I'm yeah. out of what I remember about that for sure was, you know, Gary and J-Po, those guys can play Todd music very well. But when Jesse got out there and started playing, it was like, whoa. Well, <laughs> Another yeah. level. And I just yeah. Whoa. Yeah. put everybody away. It was so much fun. It's fun that y'all would do that, and he would do that with us. We had a great time. But he was, but he was always really tasteful about it. He he yeah. wasn't a poser, you know. He was yeah. like, okay. he, he was just extremely musical. He loved to play. Yes. It was just yeah. obvious. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that was... I, I mean, I talk a little bit about, you know, how the tragedy of the too much chemo story, but on, in, in the long run, you know, if they had done the low dose and then you get sick and then you get more and then you get sick and yeah. then you get more and it can drag on for months it's and years. Yeah. And yeah. he would not want that because mm -hmm. I mean, he couldn't tour. How could he tour if they're, they're pumping yeah. chemo in him yeah. once a month or whatever? Yeah. So yeah. in a way, it it was a blessing and not not a happy time but right. still better than the alternative right the yeah. lesser of two you know really sad situations so that's um, a that's a good way to look at it yeah yeah and you that, got to say you don't ever have to say i didn't i didn't get to say anything to him or whatever you get you always you had a chance to talk to him as much as you wanted to yeah, Before. I have amnesia about a lot of that particular time frame, but uh, George Cowan's wife, Jill, was here at the house. She was sleeping on the couch, and I asked. I finally got the courage up to ask. You know, I said, I feel kind of bad. I feel like I wasn't I was barely talking to him. She said, oh, no, 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 you were totally <laughs> present, and you just kept hugging him yeah. and telling him you loved him. And, and yeah, you know, awesome. but it's, it's a weird thing your brain does. I guess it's a little brain right. overload <laughs> you know, like, um but i do remember the moment when he left yeah mm. i do i mean, it was very clear about that and yeah. and uh it was very peaceful and gentle peaceful transition yeah great yeah yeah it was like almost spooky you know and mm. it was snowing and the, all the trees were it looked every little twig was white and it was oh, so wow. beautiful mm. outside and so peaceful so thank God I got him here. <laughs> you know, it's like, yes. You're telling me, don't let me die in the hospital. And I'm, like, yeah. oh, I'm working <laughs> on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. We had to sign all kinds of releases. And then they, you know, well, he might die in the ambulance. So I said, no, he won't die. Just get him in the ambulance and get him home. You know, for you. They for finally you. did. It's huge. So I couldn't, you know, they just have to be sure you're not going to sue them or do any of that stuff. So course we wouldn't we just wanted to get him home yeah yeah and, and and he was and he and then you know going to hawaii was that was that was really good for me at first i thought oh really am i ready you know it's going to be a whole michelle said there were many, so many people there and and i wasn't that talkative then now i am like chatty kathy <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh but todd flew me first class from Kennedy nice. to Honolulu, Ooh, so I could sleep. Flight. So I could sleep. Yeah, him. yeah. And he was just so kind and just so sweet. I was just very grateful to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Well, it's nice to see you there. I well, think people, people recognize that you needed your space too. I think. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I hope they didn't feel funny. I also can't take a lot of heat and sitting under the tent it was crowded and warm and uh i faint oh yeah that's yeah. a problem <laughs> yeah that's a problem yeah. Okay. Yeah. and you know todd's seen me do it <laughs> um yeah it happened once in, in new york city and he happened to walk out of the hotel with michelle when they're putting me in the ambulance they always have to take me to the emergency room and then they go oh you're fine and you go home yeah, yeah. but uh i 
I heard Michelle saying, oh, no, we can't go to dinner. That's loose. Oh, my goodness. You know, and Dad just said, oh, she does that. Just <laughs> <it'll be fine." laughs> No big. <laughs> That's what he said. Mm-hmm. I was laughing. I was like, yep, yeah, she does that. Oh, my God. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I so I was being very cautious to, you know, the whole idea of lots of people and I guess being a little protective, you know, I didn't want it was crowded under that tent. I'll t- <laughs> there were yeah. so many people, and I don't drink. I mean, I'm not drinking alcohol. And but Robin run with Todd's brother. He calls me sis. <laughs> uh, he he was amazing. You know, we ended up with the only people. Robin and his family and I were at this one condo, and they were just a few doors down. And we would share. You know, he would drive me keep an eye on me and just, you know, nice. take care of me. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. It was a little community. Thanks, Robin. Where's and Michelle, wife? his okay. wife's name is Michelle too. So uh-huh. <laughs> and Michelle Rundgren. And John, and, John and Claudia were there. Yes. And yes. Uh, and, and, their, and their children who are all grown up now. I know. She's, Our kids are all. Daughter. I forgot her dope. name. Oh, what's her name? The daughter. Oh yeah! Oh man, she was a little I should girl. remember that too. I don't remember that either. Isn't that weird? We can't, don't. Tell oh me. man, I saw her too. Now. She's a woman um, now. It was. It was great, yeah, great. I saw her in Oregon. One of the Claudia tours. John. What's her name? Oh man, Damn, it's it. just a red scary. hair. I remember the red hair. Yeah. So, and Mary Lou, I'll make sure that we have the uh, air conditioner running full blast when you <laughs> the theater and you see compassion so you don't pass that on. I don't, it probably won't be too warm. It's, you know, a lot of it is I can't be in the sun. Look at the skin. I have no pigment. You know, it's like I burn. I get rashes from the sun. So, <laughs> I can't live in Florida. Uh, Vivian. But, but, um, Vivian is a name. I have to just, you know, I, I know what my triggers are and I can usually prevent it. But if, um, if I, if I get really, I, I sang in a church that was 99 degrees. I, went down. I was at a wedding when the air conditioner broke one time. A lot of people would. So, I think. That's brutal. Edgy girl, the, um, and Marilyn, the, her name was Vivian. Is that's Vivian. A, that's Vivian. How did you do that? Did you Mindy, remember Mindy got us in the chat room. Mindy Lang remembered. Ah, uh, good, you. good. Cause she, I, me. Was, I hadn't seen her in years. You're yeah. leaning in a little. I hadn't Hi. Either. Hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen her in years, and I was mm. so stunned. What a lovely, lovely young woman. I mean, she's beautiful. She's really beautiful. She is. She is. Yeah. She remembered me. She did. Oh yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw her organ. A few years ago, after she'd grown up some, and I was sh- just shocked, but I knew immediately who it was. You know, like I remembered her from Todd Stock when she was little. I have to apologize to mm-hmm. all the people that I've met that I don't remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, my God. You met a lot in 40 years. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at that. Maybe yeah. the next life. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm a, cool. That's, yeah, Vivian. Exactly. Vivian, yeah. She, that was, and it was great to see Rebop. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen Rebop in a long time. Yeah. And he was so dear. He just sat down at one point next to me, put his arm around my shoulders and just sat with me. Aww. He's so sweet. He's yeah. a sweet man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Very sensitive, yeah. sweet person. Yeah. And Rex seems happy with his new girlfriend and the little girls and being yeah. daddy to two lovely little girls. So <sighs> I'm happy for them. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. So. He's got nice uh, kids, Todd. His kids are all mm-hmm. very nice people. Yeah. 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 He might be Randy while you're in Akron. You know, he lives right there. Clay. Oh, yeah. I might. I'm thinking I might. Uh, I have to talk to Carla again. Um, yeah. And try to get up there. Because I miss. The thing I miss a lot is that I didn't realize how big a part touring was my social life, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, seeing friends every, in cities all over the country. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's been an, a big adjustment for me. So hence, when you asked me, Doug, <laughs> when I come <laughs> to Akron, I'm like, 
No, sure. I'll be <laughs> here. I bet you Carl and Al will be at the concert. You'll get to see them if you don't go to Cleveland. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, because I was I used to, you know, touch base with a lot of people that are dear to me, like Rachel and Danny O'Connor and people that I just don't get to see anymore mm -hmm. unless I go to California. And go <laughs> yeah, to they won't be an awkward problem. Yeah. Los Angeles. But mm -hmm. uh, but that's OK. So okay. Barry will be at the party too, so you can see him. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I'm well. I go to I, whenever Todd's playing out here on the East Coast. I, I always go to a few shows. I can't not go. You know? not. You gotta go. <laughs> Same here. He yeah. hasn't been here in a while. No, I know it has been a while. It'd be great to see Kaz. Well, Kaz came by and visited me. He was been oh, here. This, awesome. uh, but you know, I don't get to see Prairie. And Gil, who's just become a shining star, I mean, he's just so cool and mm -hmm. such a good musician. That, that was amazing. Yeah, um, he'll be at the party. He'll be at the party, too. You can see everybody. Be fun. Cool. That'll be, I'm, I'm really excited happy. about it. I don't We're know. excited. <laughs> yeah. Compassion. I mean, come on. That's yeah, that's awesome. uh, oh, I hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> no, you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I'm coming in that day. Or I'm going to get there before the day of the party so that right. I can rehearse with them. I'm much more comfortable if I've had, you know, rehearsal time. Oh, of anything that I, do, I, get that. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to just, you know, go cold. Yeah. I want to be sure yeah. that everybody's good to go, you know, especially right. me. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's a beautiful song, so I'll give it my yeah, best. It's gonna. I'm be not going to sing it exactly the way Todd does. I have to make You're it. Do your own. thing. Do your thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you because know, he does a lot of ride outs at the end and stuff that, you know, it's it wouldn't feel natural for me to imitate. I'm not imitating him. I just right. want to sing the song as. You're interpreting it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interpreting it, but you know, just you know. I, I listen and I learn it by ear, but I don't want to get too caught up in having to sing it exactly the way he did. You know, yeah. nobody right. could repeat that. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Great I mean, song. He has, uh, and the way he do, does it, I mean, the range that he uses of in his voice and uh, it's tricky. It's trickier than I thought it was, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I no started, back I, now. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, now you've done it. <laughs> no turning back now. We've all heard it. We're all I in. can't yeah. turn back now. I can't turn no. back and disappoint us all. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it'll be fun just to be there and see everybody. Yeah, I'm 100%. really looking forward to it. We are too. So thanks Thank for you asking. For yeah, thank Thanks you for, for participating. Getting in touch with me because I've been kind mm -hmm. of, you know, tucked away here, recovering. Been hard. Yeah. But I think I'm ready to go back out in the world again. So. Good. We're ready to see you. <laughs> it won't be as overwhelming as Todd's talk. We won't have that many people. We'll have a couple hundred probably. That's all said. <laughs> I that thought like 400, I, 500, I think. That's what I thought. Somebody who. Mm -hmm. I think Chasm said it was only 250 people, but I don't think so. I mean, oh, it's not stock? I think it was more than that. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Maybe. I, I thought like Michelle it. had told me it was getting close because she had to change venues. I thought it was like 500. Big, it looked it like it in the picture. Like around four or 500 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was mm -hmm. a big turnout. The original, the original venue was supposed to be like 200, I think, or something, but. Yeah, and then she had too many people, and yeah. they were still asking, you know. So, yeah, yeah. that was a really big turnout. Mm. But mm. Uh, Todd, he likes to celebrate his birthday, doesn't he? Sure he sure does. <laughs> Four times one year. <laughs> yeah. And all over the world. I mean, I love Scotland. I got to stay in a castle. Yeah. Todd that was Scott. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Well, anyway, you guys. We've been on the, this for a long time. Are we still being watched? Yeah, yeah. 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 People are loving it. They said, yeah, "Keep I going." Gotta, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, you're on Eastern time. Saying, That's right. My bad. Um, My bad. I'm a little tired. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, well, thanks for giving us so much time. I told you I only needed a few minutes, and you gave me a lot. So we love it. It's great. Oh, I hope I didn't go on and on. Oh, no, great. absolutely. You can't. Yeah, we know. We'll do it again. I'm gonna go eat some soup now. I didn't yeah. have. Any I'm dinner. really. I'm gonna have you on about ten times, and then I'm gonna no, take it. My not. book. I'm gonna sell the book. <laughs> I'm gonna write the book, and I'm gonna sell the book. I'll give you a little. Yeah, Mary Lou. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna no. take all your stories and make on right, make up the book, and then. <laughs> Uh, well, I, you know, I have to live to be 110, according to my daughter. So I have plenty of time. You yeah. You got plenty of time. That's right. All right. Uh, well, all right. Well, anyway, get guys, get some sleep. sleep, get some sleep. All right. And uh, I will see you in Akron. Yes. See you next month. Forward to it. Yep. Thanks. All right. Bye. 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 all right, everybody. Mary Lou. That was fun. Whoa. That was awesome. Good. Yeah. So good. Yeah, that was good. It's been. Uh, I don't know if anybody. Uh, maybe I don't know if it's the hair or what in her face. She kind of reminded me a little bit of Ruth Rundgren, just a little bit. Oh, really? Okay. A lot I'm more animated than Ruth. I got a Meryl was. Streep vibe from her. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got Either a Meryl really vibe. Good. Oh, uh. She looks great. All right, so look, Bill. We um, let's see here. Uh. I don't think we want to try to top that. So why no, we, no, no, like no, no, I, I, I think we can just let people. Uh, we'll just, just we'll just have, have to come back and. On. And you, you and Veg, you got to talk about the, the little bit about it. But yeah. look up here to my, whatever side I'm on here. There's a you can scan that if you want. That'll take you where you can help pitch in for the Maurice, uh, the live oh, stream. Good idea. Get you all fancy so, really, with your code. I kind of got fancy today. Yeah. Well, actually, I just thought on GoFundMe and just screenshot. I will. It. I will say this, I, you know, we haven't really totally nailed it down, but um, I am sensitive to the fact that people are contributing to Maurice and then mm -hmm. I'm doing 50 years of, you know, TRU. Mm -hmm. All of my, ev all my money, it's not my money, it's their money. Mm -hmm. Everybody's mm -hmm. money and contribution is going to this show. And that's my yeah. primary focus because we get Maurice, that's step one. We build the pyramid, that's step two. We bring maybe some fog. That's step three. If there's more, the more, <laughs> the more funds that are yeah. that are provided, yeah, the better it's the better it's yeah. going to be. And if there's anything yeah. left over, which I don't think there will be because there's a lot of expenses here, mm -hmm. that'll go into my next wave of whatever else comes up for the rest of the year. Because I, I have to rent a van to bring the. Yeah, we got to. Yeah, we we can the, just. You know, I mean, yeah. The potential right. stuff we can do is unlimited. It's just, you know, uh, it's. Um, so what I'm going to do, what I'm willing to do is if you have contributed already to Maurice, okay. I will count that gift towards, because what I'm doing is $25 gets you a lapel pin of the design and I can explain the design. Maybe we can come on and do that or people yeah, can hear that or whatever. Yeah. It's a quite involved process of how I came up with the particular image. But I wanted to incorporate the pyramid spheres and obelisks. I wanted to get. Um, I was trying for seven rays coming out of yeah. it, but when mm -hmm. I got under this thing where the bottom part, the O and the T, make an ankh. That's the T for Todd, and then the other two going up this way, that way is the R, and the other way is the U, and you get a true star in there. So it's fifty ah. T R U years, fifty true years. T Todd Rundgren's Utopia, true star Todd Rundgren. All gets meshed up together into this, and I think it looks very Egyptian. That was kind of the goal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the date is four two five two four, just loops around in there and foc focuses the seven rays, the five rays on this event. So, mm -hmm. if you've contributed to Maurice already, uh, then if you've given twenty five dollars, you'll get the lapel pin. If you give another $25, you're up to the $50 mark. So if you've already contributed, $20, $25 more will get you a shirt. Cool. And this is on the shirt? This is on the shirt? Yes. Cool. Yeah, I'm still working out. I think I'm probably going to go big on the back with that and maybe a little one on the front. I don't, you know, people can direct that too. I'm still open to I do have to get the order in here for like, what, six weeks out? Yeah. Um, Not so even. The idea is to, we got so much to do. I'll make a bunch of them. The people, they will be available at the event as well. Cause we're, I think we're going to be needing to collect money all throughout the whole process to get it all paid for. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so if you're brand new, 
you know, it doesn't matter which venue you go. You can go through the link and give it to Maurice, um, or you can come to my links, which will be on, on Run Good Radio. Um, is there a short link that's easy, or do you got to go in there and find it? <laughs> well, it's not if, you go, if you go to paypal.me slash wibworks, that's okay. me. Okay. PayPal that you know PayPal dot me slash Wibworks and give Same as your part. heart directs you, but um, you have to be there to get the stuff. Yep. But this is really mainly about for us the Maurice. We say it's about Maurice. It's really about the live stream, and then the, we yeah. want Maurice to be a part of the live stream. Live stream is is what you're really putting the money into. Um, all right, Veggie Girl, I appreciate you filling in at the last minute. It was fun. Really good to see right. you. You, yeah, you got lucky. You got a really good show tonight. Yeah. Man, good stuff. Good guest. Yeah. Yeah, great guest. All right. So, Bill, we'll circle back through this again. Um, and I'm going to get, I think Chasm will come talk to us one night too. Uh, he's got some stuff up his sleeves for this show. We'll bring some other people in. It's good to be back kind of doing one of these. I didn't know we were going to get this lucky tonight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it makes me feel like 2020. We were just, you know, doing some cool shows. And that's how yeah. this whole thing got started. Lou yeah. seems like she's in a really good place. It was just oh man, that's really good. Ever. You know, when I saw her in, in Hawaii, I just I think everybody felt like they should leave her alone. And it and sounds like it the way she was talking. I'm not getting that from her now. You know? yeah. No, I think she's going to have a blast at this yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah. So let's make sure she does. Actually, how about that? Yeah, I like. That. I cannot wait to hear we're her. Gonna make, new we're going to make it as cool as possible. That'd be awesome. Yep. What, what All right, everybody, peace out. We're going to make it as cool as possible. Yes. It's going to be fun. See y'all next show. We'll do another yes, one sir. soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.